<laughs> all right, we are all set. I would like to call the Newington Town Council regular meeting of Tuesday, May 24th, 2022 to order. If you would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice, liberty and justice for all. It feels like when you're in chorus and you have to do the rounds, right? <laughs> you can hear everybody speaking. It makes it difficult. All right. Um, I apologize that we were a little late getting started. Um, it is, um, oh. I think Sharon. I, yes. Okay. Um, so we did call the order at 708, just for the record. Kim, yours is saying it's on. Shouldn't be. No. Click on it, mommy. Click that up too. Okay, try it. Yeah, Everything's all set? Okay. I think that was it. I saw your little square turn yellow. It's <laughs> how we can tell. All right. So we are um, in our regular meeting. We would move now to the roll call, please. <laughs> be quick. <laughs> James is juggling a few things over there. Oh, is Susan on? Yeah. Yes, I'm on. I'm sorry, Susan. If you could do the roll call, please. Sure, no problem. Councilor Braverman? Here. Deputy Mayor Budraco? Here. Councilor Camillo? Here. Councilor Donahue? Here. Councilor Mankey? Here. Councilor Nagel? Here. Here. Councilor Page? I'm here. Councilor Rada? Here. Mayor Del Buno. Here. Here. I know. And okay. I don't know if it's echoing, but all right. Sorry. The wonderful world of technology. Um, we will move on to now to approval of the agenda. I believe we have a few changes. Yeah, I would make. I would make move the uh, the following changes to the agenda. I would remove item seven, executive session, update on pending litigation. I would remove item 9A, appointment conservation commission. And I would add to item 12, a C, Anna Reynolds final, uh, final project bud, bud, budget acceptance. All right, so we have three recommended changes. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilor Rada. Any discussion on these items? All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right. We are on now to the fun part of the agenda. We have several awards to give out this evening. So I am going to come around to start. Or do you want me to read them here? And meet? Uh, you know what? I'm going to stay here and read it. It's probably easier. Yeah. And then I'll come around and meet you. You want to sit up here? I can do that. Or you can stay there and I'll come to you as soon as I finish reading it. How's that? Well, she wants to speak. She so oh, you want, you're ready to speak over here. I didn't know if we had a portable mic. Okay, perfect. You are the first proclamation that I'm giving like in person here live and ready to walk over to you. All right. So I'm going to sit here and I'm going to read the proclamation into the record first, and then we will come on over to you, Ms. Foley. This evening, we are honoring two um, volunteers of the year. We have one organization and one individual um, this year. It's a little bit different. And so our first um, honoree is Ms. Patty Foley. Proclamation. Whereas each year, the town council recognizes someone who has voluntarily dedicated time and or resources for the benefit of others and the community at large. And whereas this year, Patricia Patty J. Foley is being recognized for her active and continuing involvement and support of many volunteer jobs, especially with Newington Community Television and the Lucy Robbins Wells Library. And whereas Patty Foley has also been involved with the environment and is currently the chair of Newington Environmental Quality Commission and is working hard to make Newington a part of sustainable Connecticut. And whereas Patty Foley, a certified CPA, has shared her expertise by helping seniors with their financial needs as well as other nonprofits. 
And whereas, Patty Foley is the person to go to if you want anything done, true fact. Her dedication to NCTV is unmatched and her reason for volunteering is simply because she wants the town of Newington to shine. And whereas, Patty Foley has been asked by boards and organizations to be a volunteer spokesperson to promote their interests because she is the person to go to if you want things done and done well. And whereas, Patty Foley is a beacon of light for volunteering in Newington and truly personifies what, is, what it means to volunteer to improve the lives of all individuals that live in, work, or visit the town of Newington. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Newington Town Council hereby recognizes Patricia J. Foley and her commitment to the town of Newington as she represents the very best of Newington as its 2021 Volunteer of the Year in recognition of her volunteer activities for the welfare of the community and for serving as a positive role model and an example of all that can be accomplished through the spirit of volunteerism. Dated in Newington, Connecticut, this 24th day of May, 2022, signed by the Mayor on behalf of the Town Council. Wow. Second by Councilor Donahue. And we'll open it up for comments. I always want to do the vote first, but we're going to do comment first because that's the right way to do it. Councilors, let's see. Deputy Mayor Bedraco. Okay, I think Patty J. Foley defines the meaning of the word volunteer. Um, and she's a very passionate volunteer. Um, when she takes on a commitment, she's dedicating to getting it done and done correctly, no matter what obstacles get in her way. Over the years, Patty's given hundreds of hours of time to Newington. And even though she's not in the spotlight, she's the behind the scenes worker who, um, who serves many organizations, um, NCTV, the Environmental Quality Commission, and the library, just to name a few. And I know Patty chooses to volunteer without expecting rewards or recognition, but it's about time we let you know how much you're appreciated. And this is a well-deserved honor. And um, on behalf of the town of Newington and the residents and everybody you touched, thank you. All right. Councillor Nagel. Thank you. Patty, well-deserved. Well-deserved and long overdue. Uh, you've been just in every capacity a leader where you come forward to uh, take on a, a duty, be it the library, be it your, your present position that you're now holding, be it anything that you take on, you take on with all your passion and desire for the betterment of the town. And I applaud you for that. And I'm glad to, to have you as a friend as well, and glad that you are part of Newington and hope you continue to do all the good works that you have done in the past. So thank you so much, are well-deserved. Thank you, Councilor Nato. Councilor Mankey. Uh, Patty, I would just like to extend my congratulations on this award. Um, I've been involved with you in a, a number of things. And every, every place I turn up to help out, you seem to be there already. Uh, and you're seeing you, now you're there. You're there before I am, and you're probably there after I'm gone. Uh, and, and I just want to applaud your volunteer spirit because it does take a lot of effort to volunteer on someone else's behalf. Uh, you could easily sit sit at home like a lot of other people do, and and you know and, and watch Jeopardy. Um, but instead, you volunteered to come out and do stuff, and I think that's that's important. And what's what makes our town so great? So I appreciate your efforts and, and congratulations. Thank you. All right. And Councilor Donahue. Uh, I, I don't know what I can say other than what everybody else has already said, but, you know, thank you for all your service to NCTV. Uh, you know, we probably couldn't do it without you. Although sometimes sometimes we have serious discussions about <laughs> but that's what, that's what makes it great. So thank you for your service and for everything else you do for the town. Okay, Pat, I'm going to bring this around to you. Um, before I do, let me because the mics are here for me. Um, I just wanna say thank you to you for all of your years of service. Um, uh, there's only a few things listed in this proclamation in comparison to the totality of all that you've done. And, and I know that 
It would be a while. That is right. This is a short sampling of Ms. Patricia J. Foley. Um, and, you know, it, what kept on coming up in the resolution and even in comments is if you want it done and done well, you go to Patty Foley. And that is true. And we, you know, we needed someone to take on the sustainable stuff and you took it on and you um, you pursue when you're not getting somewhere. You don't quit. You keep going. You don't ever give up um, and you get it done um, to the best of your ability and, and um, all for for volunteerism, for the sake of volunteerism. And um, I'm thankful for you um, and all that you've done for us and will continue to do for us. And I am very thankful for the role model that you are for our community, because hopefully people see folks like you and they see, um, you know, maybe they'll hear about this resolution and they'll say, wow, look at what she did. Maybe I can get more involved now. You know, when people start hearing about volunteerism, and we've got lots of volunteers in the audience tonight, and we're, you know, we're going to talk about them too. But Hopefully people see this and they think, wow, what else can I do for my town? You guys are role models for us and I appreciate you. Um, we, should, we need to vote first, probably. Sure. Okay, yes. Let's uh, go ahead and formalize the vote on this. We have a second on the table. Okay. Dave, are you unmuted? Dave is unmuted. Let's see. Yes, I am. Here we go. Okay. All right, we have a motion on the table and a second uh, honoring uh, Patricia J. Foley as our volunteer of the year. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, Ms. Foley. Today? Oh, yeah. I assume okay. so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. The floor is yours. All right. Did, did you close your vote? Yep. We did. Okay. It is Was official. Yeah, Judge, I'm going to screw up the knowledge rules here. <laughs> okay. So, all right. Is, is that the hum? Okay. Is it good? Yep. All right. Get the audio. Oh, yeah. All right. Tell me if I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and it is recording for Yeah, about 11 o'clock tonight, I'll let you know. Yeah. Okay, so I want to say thank you to the people who first who nominated me. They scared the daylights because I couldn't remember. I did all that stuff. But to the town council selection committee who had to pick out all the other stuff from people who were also... Um, um, who also deserved this award, and to the town, oops, the mayor and the town council. I want to say thank you to the volunteer organizations I contributed to over the years, and it has been an honor, as each of them have inspired me and encouraged my growth. Growing up, I didn't know that volunteer was much normal, except where we grew up, you had no choice. <laughs> and until I went away to college that I realized that volunteering was like a big deal. So I'm sitting there and ready for whatever we call the, like, like a town council, student council. And here I am. Looking around and there's nobody there with their hand up. And that was a really awakening moment. But anyway, I join with pride the 31 years of volunteers honored before me. It was, it is an exceptional group of folks. Our theme, if I can be so Brian to talk about them, is I'll do that. Uh, we volunteer for many reasons. Mostly to make a better backyard. Um, yesterday we were. 
that's my place. Today we are. And tomorrow we will be the folks with our hands raised, the courage it takes to offer our individual talent, our commitment to learn new skills, <clears throat> Mr. Donahue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. And for, for our community. Why? Because I'll I'll do that. Um, we don't try. We uniquely do it, don't we, Mr. Mankey? We do. Okay. Um, like all of you sitting in front of me, welcome to the to the show, Miss Frada. <laughs> um, you're all volunteers too, even though you got elected. But you're all volunteers, and we're proud of you. Um, what we do this is because the rewards we receive are countless. You can't add them up. It's a way of life. You can join in at any time. You don't have to start at the beginning or at the end or the middle. Your contribution of time, courage, and skills is valuable to our community. Whether for, for a few hours, a day, or longer, and I got another 40 years, maybe 38. <laughs> but let's go on. We'll hold you to that. No matter what, no matter when, you are, you, a volunteer, is needed. Um, so I invite you to join us as volunteers in whatever you love to do. Once again, thank you uh, to the mayor and the town council for recognizing me among these volunteers that have made New Intent a great place to live. Oh yeah, P.S. <laughs> we can't do anything without ever doing that. No shame here. For how to get involved in the Environmental Quality Commission, we have three open seats. So <laughs> I am looking for people who are interested in all phases of our environment. Mind you, I got involved in seventh grade. It's kind of scary. I found an old paper the other day and it frightens the daylights out of me. Number two, NCTB. It is a great place to be. Oh, I forgot with the environmental. We have our upcycling contest, which is open right now. So if you'd like to win a really nice prize, make, a, make an entry and get it in, I think, by the middle of June. You can find the information and the thing on the town website. But let's go back. NCTV. What about that? run by volunteers for the last 36 years and change. Um, we have done a remarkable job of capturing what we're all about in this town, which makes it kind of special. Um, this Saturday, if you have nothing to do about 7.15, show up in front of Liberty Bank because we're getting ready for the parade. And I tell you, it's a lot of fun. And maybe we'll find somebody who wants to climb on the top of the truck and take my place. I'm not climbing on the top of the truck anymore. I had a helicopter coming in and everything. <laughs> oh, you wait till the year I can't do it. We get a helicopter. <laughs> okay. Um, but then you say, but I want to do some other type of organization. Well, Go to the library pages and we have the Newington organizational list, where it names the organization under topics and there's all the contact information and it is updated every year by our most talented library staff. And that last but not least, our boards and commissions. You can find out all kinds of boards and commissions. We got tons of different types of subject matters that need volunteers. So go to the town website, go to the tab called government, and then go beneath that and you'll find the whole list from A to Z. 
of the boards and commissions. Once again, thank you for this honor. I'm I've been practicing all week. <laughs> you are fierce. I was scared for you there for a second, Scott. <laughs> all right. I, I think what we're going to do is go through all the proclamations and then we'll open it for public comment afterward, okay? Our, uh, the next recipients this evening are an organization. It's our Newington uh, CERT team. And I know we have several of you in the audience. I'm going to go ahead and read the proclamation in. We'll do our second, um, and then we'll um, have you come up after we're done with that process. Okay, folks. Proclamation. Whereas each year the town council recognizes an individual or a group of individuals who has voluntarily dedicated time and or resources for the benefit of others and the community at large. And whereas this year, members of the Newington Community Emergency Response Team, CERT, are being recognized for their active and continuing involvement and support of so many local events. And whereas Newington CERT supported all 36 of the Central Connecticut Health District's COVID-19 vaccination clinics for all four towns in the district. They were also critical in the distribution of personal protective equipment and at-home rapid test kits. And whereas Newington CERT members also supported other various community events, such as Motorcycle Madness, the Extravaganza, the town's 150th anniversary walk. And whereas many of these same individuals also supported other CERT activations, including shelter supply staging, storm preparation, as well as volunteering for other groups and organizations that benefit Newington. And whereas Newington CERT members attend training in a variety of emergency response functions, such as sheltering and evacuations, and are critical in the successful implementation of the town's emergency operations plan. And whereas the value of the Newington CERT team is highly significant. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the T Newington Town Council hereby recognizes members of the Newington Community Emergency Response Team and their commitment to the town of Newington as they represent the very best of Newington as its 2021 Volunteer of the Year in recognition of their volunteer activities for the welfare of the community and for serving as positive role models and an example of all that can be accomplished through the spirit of volunteerism and teamwork. Dated in Newington, Connecticut, this 24th day of May, 2022, signed Beth Del Buno Mayor on behalf of the town council. Seconded by Councilor Mankey. And I will open it up for council comment. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting to look at my screen. Councilor Mankey. Yes, I think it's important we just expand on, on a couple of these points. CERT helped out at 36 flu clinics, 30, 36 clinics during the day and on, on a Saturday. During the height of COVID, when it would have been easier to stay home in your own house and protect yourself, they worked at 36 clinics and they just weren't in Newington. It's one thing to volunteer for people in Newington, but they also volunteer for people in Rocky Hill, Berlin, and Wethersfield. Mm -hmm. Not just Newington. They extended themselves out of our town to help other towns that don't have a CERT program. I'm certain they're probably working on getting a CERT program now because they saw how valuable we were. That was 1,700 hours that was spent. Just think that. That's 1,700 hours of people who gave up their time to drive to Wethersfield or Rocky Hill, where Godforsaken place that is, or Berlin. To volunteer to help other people in other towns. And those people were semi cranky <laughs> because they were scared. They were the elderly people and they were scared. Mm -hmm. And we greeted them. We put them at ease. We wiped down the chairs. We moved them from here to there. We helped them when they passed out. We picked them up off the ground. <laughs> That's important to remember. And then we also want to point out when we did provide uh, services, passing out the, the glove, the masks and, and, the, and the home test kits. 
We did that one day at, at, in an evening when the cars were backed up to Cedar Street at, at, at the Milk Lane Park Garage where the cars were coming. And those people were cranky because they only got two kids. They wanted three kids. They wanted four kids. We stood there, cert, did a good job of allaying their fears, getting them through the process and, and out the door so that we, we, could, we, could, we, could, we could take care of that. And the second time we, that was done, it was like 20 degrees below zero. So it wasn't like a walk in the park. It was cold. We could only stand on line for so long and we had to go back in and get warmed up uh, because our eyebrows and mustaches were, were freezing up. <laughs> so these people volunteered their time, not just for themselves or not just for their town, but for other towns. Mm -hmm. For three other towns that they, they couldn't have done this distri distribution without us. And that's important to remember that Berlin, Rocky Hill, and Wethersfield would have been stuck without, without our, our help. But these people volunteered to go to another town and help a whole bunch of people they don't even know um, get their first shot and then come back for the second shot. So I think it's important that they recognize that the, the effort, the 1,700 hours of volunteer time that went in when COVID was still rampant and, and it was still a concern. But they decided that they were going to help do for the greater good. They were going to help their 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 friend, their neighbor towns and their friends here in town uh, to get the shot so they could be safe. And I think they 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 should get applauded for that. Thank you, Councilor Mankey, Deputy Mayor Bedrako. Um, yeah, I'm going to follow up on um, Councilor Mankey's theme a little bit about time, and time is a precious commodity. And when you volunteer, you're offering one of your most precious resources which is time to make life better for those that you come in contact with in your service. And as Councilor Mankey said, individually and collectively, <clears throat> CERT members donate many of hours of, of their time to our community. Um, you're present at most community events um, where you provide backup support to those who are having fun and, and enjoying the event and you're there to keep them safe. And you frequently attend trainings in order to make sure you're prepared to respond, God forbid, in the event that some that your services are needed. And um, the past two years have you've been extremely busy in a capacity you probably never envisioned when you um, signed up for CERT, because you played such an important role in maintaining Newington's health and safety by assisting um, CCHD's COVID efforts through your clinic support and your distribution of PPE. Um, CERT's an extraordinary volunteer team, and I want to thank you for all your service to Newington. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Bedrako. Councillor Nagel. I would like to echo what the two previous councillors have said. Uh, an outstanding job under difficult times and volunteering and doing things and not ex not re asking for anything in return, uh, selflessly giving in all kinds of situations, uh, uh, be it more upfront or not, uh, aside from the very important pandemic you've done. Uh, but also uh, different uh, events that have happened where uh, you're directing traffic, you're, you're helping people out individually as to where they are, the parade that's coming up. There are many different kinds of things you do that are behind the scenes that people just not are, are not aware of that make events in town successful and also keep our citizens safe. So I applaud you for all the things that you're doing, uh, given the last two years especially, but also what you've done throughout all the years that this organization has been in existence. It definitely is one of, if not the most outstanding CERT team within the whole state. And I know other towns are, are very appreciative and uh, think that we are blessed to, to have you and all the volunteers uh, that are in your group. They're of all different ages, all different backgrounds, which is another applauding thing. You truly represent the town at its best. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Nagel. I would like to add my congratulations and thanks to the CERT team. Um, everyone's mentioned so many of the things that you've done and um, 
COVID obviously has been a big one in the last couple of years and a primary focus, but I think we often forget, especially with many of the weather events that we've had in the last few years, that you all are activated for those things as well. When we need a shelter, when we need um, supplies or anything like that, you all activate and help with those kinds of things as well. So I um, wanted to mention that also. Um, and I will say when COVID started, um, I had the um, opportunity, unfortunate, I guess, um, to be part of several um, district-wide calls uh, to plan and figure out the emergency status of things. And, and with Megan, you know, on a lot of the calls, trying to figure out with our other towns how we were going to manage certain things or, you know, even as far as mask mandates or things like that, I was able to kind of listen in and hear how the conversations went. And um, I will say that over and over and over again, our CERT team was mentioned in those calls. And other towns thanked us repeatedly and still do for the help that our CERT team gave to their towns, um, which speaks volumes. You, you volunteer for your own community, but you're, you're representing our community also when you go out and help others. So um, I can't tell you from my perspective as mayor and being in on those meetings and getting a compliment because of all the work that you guys do, um, you know, I, I certainly appreciate and I want you to know that other towns recognize that and they see it and they make it known that they're grateful as well. So I would like to personally thank you for all of those efforts. All right, we have a um, proclamation as well as a second on the table. I would like to call the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion. Motion passes unanimously. All right, I, we're going to come around the table here and present this to you. Are we doing a photo op? <laughs> Am I coming over this way? This is all new to us okay? in this room. I'm sorry. I'm just so much. I know you guys all are coming around the table. Photo op is right here. Camera is there. So let's turn that. All right. We're facing that camera. You come in front of me. <laughs> All right, everybody, look at me. Hey, Newington. Newington. There we go. Good. All right. Do you want to say hi? All right. I'm going to have you just sit over here. Yeah, me too. Uh, the group deserted. Since this, uh, uh, this task was put on me like, you know, 10 minutes before we came uh, in here, I, I don't have a prepared speech. Um, but I just want to say it's an honor for all of us to um, give back and serve the town of Newington. And um, we just want, we appreciate the recognition. We, we've actually done so much for, for many years now um, and to receive this recognition is, is a lot. And so I wanna thank those that nominated us and town council members and you, Mayor Del Bono. So thank you very much. Our pleasure, thank you. Is there anyone here for the next one, the ADA one? Uh, Bill, 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 all right, on to the next one. Okay, technology is wonderful, but it keeps us running. Okay, our next proclamation is to recognize um, the American with Disabilities Act, ADA 32nd anniversary. And I know we have Bill DeMail on with us, so I'll go ahead and read the proclamation in, and then we'll have him comment when we're done. Proclamation, Americans with Disabilities Act, 32nd anniversary. Whereas the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, was signed into law 32 years ago on July 26, 1990 by President George H.W. Bush. 
And whereas Newington, Connecticut affirms the principles of equality and inclusion for persons living with disabilities as set forth for the state of Connecticut and as embodied in the ADA, the laws of the state of Connecticut and ordinances of Newington, Connecticut. And whereas the ADA has transformed the lives of the more than 61 million American people living with disabilities. And whereas the ADA has promoted equal access to employment, government services, public accommodations, commercial facilities, and public transportation. And whereas the ADA has prohibited discrimination against people living with disabilities. And whereas the ADA has guaranteed that people living with disabilities have the same opportunities as everyone else to participate in the mainstream of American life. <clears throat> and whereas all of Newington's governmental departments work with constituents and residents to bring forth the promise of hope, freedom, and independence that is envisioned by the passage of the ADA. And whereas, in addition, the ADA Coalition of Connecticut, ADACC, has granted funding to provide education and awareness at a celebratory anniversary special event at Mill Pond Park on July 21st, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed, the Newington Town Council renews our commitment to empowering Americans with disabilities through equal access so they can achieve their full potential and have every opportunity to realize the American dream while we hereby extend greetings and best wishes to all observing July 26, 2021 as Americans with Disabilities Act. Sorry, that should be 22, right? Thank you. We have a typo, we'll fix that. July 26, 2022, as Americans with Disabilities Act Awareness Day, dated in Newington, Connecticut, this 24th day of May, 2022, signed Beth Del Buno Mayor on behalf of the Newington Town Council. Second. Second by Councilor Rada. And we'll open it up for council discussion. I'm sorry, I'll look on the screen. Okay. Um, I would just like to um, say thank you. I know Mr. DeMail brings this forward to us every year, so it doesn't we don't lose sight of it. It is a priority of this council and the town of Newington to make sure that we are continually improving our efforts to um, make sure that um, all facilities and parks and everything are um, ADA accessible and that we are honoring those with disabilities by make, in, uh, ensuring that they have equal access. And uh, it is an ongoing effort. We've done... Um, so many improvements over the years, but I feel like um, we are always being brought forward uh, different ways or different ideas to continue that effort. And that is a, a commitment this council um, takes very seriously. And so I'm, I'm very pleased to, to say that we are celebrating this 32nd anniversary and it's nice to know that we're gonna be doing that at Mill Pond Park on July 26th. That's wonderful news. Um, I'd like to open it up. Um, actually, let's do our vote first. So I don't see any other council hands up. So I'll. I can't find Harvard Week 1990 is 32 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is scary. That is scary. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. I tried to wait that time. All right. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right. Mr. DeMail's on the. I'm sorry, I can't. He's there. He's unmuted. Okay. Welcome, Bill. Hello, Mayor. Uh, thank you so much, uh, both town council and mayor, for bringing this to the residents' attention. It's always good to put it on the forefront of you know people's minds. Everything we've done as a town, you should be applauded for. You guys have funded all kinds of projects to make things accessible for preschool, all the way to senior citizens and everything in between. So we have to remember that universal design is so important for everyone, not just people with disabilities, but it certainly helps them. Um, yes, as John, you know, Councilman Donahue says, 32 years, unbelievable how time has flown by, but still needs to have that attention brought. I wanna recognize my good friends, uh, fellow directors at the library, uh, Lisa Masson, Carol Lebrecht from Human Services and Jamie Trevithan from the uh, Senior and Disabled Center. We've all gotten together and are gonna publicize this event to bring it some notoriety and awareness. And Mayor, we're hoping, uh, we, think you, we, we think you'll come out, but we're hoping that you will read the proclamation at the Daily Planet concert on Thursday night on July 21st and give out 100 free ice cream cones for everybody. So oh, you, I won't wear my heels that night, Bill. Last time I had heels on, it wasn't good. Yeah, dress comfortably, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, All uh, right. And then lastly, 
um, it's just nice to have people notice all the good things that are happening in town and uh, on behalf of the ADA with the truncated things for people with blindness, with ramps everywhere and handles and lower you know, sinks and things that make it much more accessible to live and work and play in a great place like Newington. So thank you, town council. Thank you, mayor, for bringing this recognition. And I just want to mention this will be the first time dial -a ride will be available to bring people that need transportation to the concerts on Thursday nights on July 21st. So kudos to Jamie Trevithan in the Senior Disabled Center. Oh, that's wonderful. Great news. Thank you, Bill. And it's officially in my calendar. Whoever saw me typing it is just putting that event in my calendar. <laughs> it's in there. All right. Trevithan's on as well. Oh, Jamie's on also. Jamie, did you want to um, comment as well? I don't see her on my side. I believe I believe she's at a soccer practice in that so okay. I don't actually see her for her or for her kids. <laughs> I, I, I'm here. I am I am at a soccer practice, so you're not seeing me on video, but I just wanted to echo everything <laughs> Bill said and thank you all for your support. And we look forward to seeing you on July 21st. All right, great. Thank you, Jamie. And it's I'd love to hear the dial right's gonna be helping out. That's a great idea. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we are on to our next item. We have two uh, former counselors with us this evening and we are going to honor them uh, with the customary um, chair presentation. Uh, when you serve on a counselor uh, on the Board of Education, it's customary that upon your, we call it retirement, um, <laughs> when you're no longer serving, um, we like to present a special chair. There is one in the corner of the room. Um, and actually, you all have to, actually, you have to share the chair. You, we only get one chair. <laughs> you both got the rocking chair, so it is a good presentation. There is a, a you can choose that or not rocking version, um, but that is the chair that they are being presented with. And I have uh, the oh, proclamations. Get up there. <laughs> um, the proclamation is a combined proclamation. It has both of you in it. So I will read it uh, for both of you and we'll start there. Okay, folks. We are tonight honoring uh, Counselor Carol Annist as well as Counselor Chris Miner. Proclamation, whereas Carol Annist served during the 2015 to 2021 Newington Town Councils and voluntarily provided service to the town and did so professionally and proudly. And whereas Chris Miner served during the 2017 to 2021 Newington Town Councils and voluntarily provided service to the town and did so professionally and proudly. And whereas these community leaders placed the interests of the town above their personal lives, sacrificing major events in the daily activities of their spouses, children, and families to attend numerous town council, board, commission, and other public meetings and gatherings. And whereas these dedicated public servants diligently performed their role, knowing that the future of our town was affected by their actions. And whereas former town council members, Carol Annist and Chris Miner are hereby recognized for their loyal and dedicated service. And whereas over the years as an official town of Newington chair has been presented to former councilors in recognition of their work and to serve as a symbol of the town's gratitude. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Newington Town Council, on behalf of the residents of the town of Newington, hereby present an honorary chair to the former members of the town council and extend sincere appreciation to them for a job well done. Dated in Newington, Connecticut, this 24th day of May, 2022, signed Beth Del Buno Mayor on behalf of the Newington Town Council. Second. Seconded by Councilor Mankey. I will open it up for council comments. Councilor Mankey. Uh, it seems like you're getting a free chair out of this deal, but trust me, it's not a free chair. You've paid for this chair over and over and over and over and over and over again. As, as we said, you, you, you've missed the important thing, milestones in your family's lives. You, you've, you've, if you're like me, had a lot of sleepless nights trying to decide which way to go with, for the town. Um, you had people stop you in the grocery store to complain about this or that. Um, so you paid for this chair over and over and over again, and it's, I'm glad we can, can give a recognition of, of, of the chair. It, it should be much more, but we're giving you a chair. <laughs> it doesn't have a cushion, I know, it's just a chair. So. Uh, in, over the years, we, we've, in the last, you know, in the last council, we, we've, we've, we've probably been on different sides in a number of things, but for the both of you, I always re respected you because you, 
you like I and the rest of the people on the council had the best interest in Newington at heart. Nobody works hard to get at this table if they don't have the best interest in Newington at heart. Nobody, because it's a whole lot of work to get here and it's a whole lot of work once you're here. Mm -hmm. And so you two put in your time, put in your effort, and I'm glad you're getting a share for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Deputy Mayor Bedrico. Yeah, Carol and Chris, um, I want to express my appreciation for your years of dedicated service, not only on the council, but um, for our community in general, because I know both of you have your different um, passions, your different organizations that you've served in the past and you both continue to serve. Um, I see your names and your faces all over. Um, but tonight, it's about the time that you served on the council. And as Councilor Mankey said, you were volunteers and it took time and commitment. And I know that at times you did have to set aside um, personal obligations and family obligations in order to fulfill your responsibilities as a counselor. But you both took your role very seriously and you did that um, willingly. And you did it because um, I know both of you care about Newington. And although at times we did disagree, I think we were able to discuss issues um, because of both of your um, your professionalism and your demeanor, we were able to talk civilly and respectfully amongst ourselves and move forward as a council for the betterment of Newington. So, um, you know, I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> and I um, just want to thank you for your service. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Councilor Nagel. Thank you. I'd like to share what the previous councillors have said as well. Uh, though we disagreed at times over things, we managed to uh, cordially and, and respectfully share our disagreements, sometimes come to compromises, sometimes not, but we managed to serve without rancor and it's greatly appreciated, uh, I think by the town, that indeed uh, your dedication brings a different point of view and that is good and that uh, you contribute to the group for the betterment of the town. Uh, I know that uh, this building started when I first saw you, uh, Mr. Miner, and uh, here we are sitting in this building, enjoying it, and uh, proud that that hopefully building committee is, is finished and we're able to be there. And also for both of us that we, that we, we are actually sitting in the building and though we are in hybrid but live, actually being able to see each other from afar, but seeing each other and saying that, that we have accomplished something and you have accomplished many things under the years that you have served in various different capacities. And I hope uh, you continue to do so. Thank you again. Thank you, Councillor Nagel. Councillor Donahue? I want to echo what everybody else said and stuck being the fourth person in. Uh, but I also want to thank you two guys for, you know, helping me out. I came in as a brand new counselor. You guys have been here for a few sessions already. And, uh, you know, I was following the rules. You helped me, uh, helped guide me in the right direction. So I want to thank you for that. And, you know, I'm not calling me out when I misspeak <laughs> on the air when I'm not muted. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Rada? Yes, as a new counselor, um, you both have moved on as Councillor Page and I have moved in, but, um, and I can't speak for Mitch, but I know that, um, I think as John Donahue told me uh, about a year ago, that there's a real learning curve and you only begin to, <coughs> excuse me, understand how much work and what the rate, weight of the responsibility is until you sit in this chair. Um, or sit on Zoom or wherever it is that we get together and, and we meet. And I wanted to thank both of you. I know you've supported us um, as we've moved forward and continue to support us. And um, thank you. As I said, I'm just beginning to understand all of the work that you all have done over the past several years. So thank you so much. Councilor Camilla. You are missed. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, Carol. So I, I thank you a lot. Thank you, Chris. Um, I just want to add, um, this is, it's an emotional night because I we were together for a lot of years together. And um, 
everybody mentioned, you know, when we had differences of opinion, but honestly, that was few and rare. Um, and, and when we did, it was very civil and cordial and we were able to discuss things. And I always felt like um, no matter what the issue was, I could speak and be heard. And I hope you felt the same that when you spoke, you were heard. So whether we agreed or not, um, we always listened and we always worked together to get to the end of an issue. And I felt oftentimes the collaboration was um, exactly what this town needs. And, and um, the, that council that we were on for those last few years, um, I think was very unique when I look historically at how well we got along and how we worked so collaboratively together for the betterment of Newington. And I'm thankful for that. Um, and when I read the proclamations, I'm like, where's this? And where's this? There's so much more to you guys. Um, and everybody else kind of hit on it, but this is a generic proclamation that talks about being on the council, but you both know being on the council isn't just coming to these meetings twice a month, which that's what Jeff Hedberg told me when he recruited me. Like, that's just two meetings a month. Yeah, how can it go on? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, you know. I had to pass it forward. Um, <laughs> um, but it's those committees and commissions and all those other liaison roles and the community involvement and the public um, events that we go to that are what make the biggest difference for our community. So us representing and being out in the community and doing those other jobs, those committees, commissions and public events, that's how we figure out what everybody wants from us. And that's how we can better represent here. And you both do an amazing job of that, did do and will continue to do that. I know that. Um, and I just want to make sure that everybody understands exactly what goes into what you all did for those years that you were here. Um, and even before, I, you know, you served on the board of ed. I know Carol um, and, you know, we got firefighter volunteer over here, Mr. Minor. Um, and you both find ways to still volunteer. I know, Carol, you've stepped up for NEMS and are doing a lot of work with them. So um, it doesn't go unnoticed that just because you're not still sitting up here, you guys are all still, you're still doing it. You're still doing the hard work out there and representing Newington. And so I'm, I'm super thankful for it. not just your years here, but what you continue to do. Thank you. Do you, Mr. Mankey just, has a great idea. Just a point of order. I, when I think of, of, of Chris and Carol, I, I think of Moses. Because for the last two years, we've come, <laughs> we have come so close to sitting in this room as a council. We have come so close, sometimes within minutes, I think so one time I was on the way here. So I, and I, on behalf of, of Council Page, I would give up my seat so you two could sit at the count, at the counter here. <laughs> photo op. Come on up, guys. I'm going to get my camera and take a photo. How's that? You guys worked hard to get this building done and get these council chambers ready. So get up here and have a moment. We were so hoping that we would be able to do that. Does so this mean, does this mean we're going to be better counselors? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys go sit. I'm going to take some photos. Mitch, you left the door <laughs> wide open. I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> Threw you a softball. Oh, my God. <laughs> But we went through what we went through to get here. I <laughs> saw <laughs> <laughs> green. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. And you can speak from it too if you like. No, I already said what I had to say in November. It's like an obstacle course. Be careful. <laughs> Note to self. Councillor Anna. Thank you. Note to self. Councillor Anna. Thank you. Congratulations, guys. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Okay. And now we will open it up for public participation. Let me just switch my windows here. Any member of the public that's in the room, if you would like to come forward, you can come forward to the table here. And um, we do usually alternate between folks in the room if anybody wants to speak, as well as our Zoom participants. Participants, excuse me. Um, we do have a few online with their hands up. If you are coming forward to speak, we just ask that you state your name and address for the record. Uh, we do have a three minute time limit. There is a bar on the screen usually once we get there. On the proclamations. Oh, I was just going into public participation because that's what's listed on the agenda. I, okay. In that case, well, I didn't there add. We didn't add anything on the. Uh, yeah. Right. On the agenda, the next item is public participation. 
All right, so if you are here, um, I would ask that if you're here for the proclamations that um, you come forward first. It's hard for me to tell on Zoom who is, so we'll just go in the order that they came forward. All right. Our first member of the public is Richard Laverriere. Yes, uh, good evening. Thank you, Mayor Dalbuno. Hello, can you good hear evening. me? Yes. You sure can. Can you just give yes. your ad name and address? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Dalbuno. My name is Richard William Laverriere, 3 Winterbury Court. Uh, I am a member of the Board of Education, and I'm also the chair of the Phil, uh, facilities subcommittee. I do want to briefly say thank you, Patty Foley, for all you do. I want to uh, say thank you to the CERT team. It's really incredible the stories that I heard tonight um, about all you did for not only Newington, but for the out-of-towners uh, in uh, Berlin, Rocky Hills, and Weathersfield. Very commendable. Uh, to Mr. DeMaio, I want to say uh, thank you as well. And the way he said it was, it's uh, people with disabilities, not disabled people. They're people who happen to be disabled, person before the disorder. And um, yeah, anyway, moving forward, I just want to uh, talk to you about the John Patterson parking lot tonight. Uh, I'd like to give you a brief timeline and I'd like to give you a recommendation. On December 14th, 2021, the facilities uh, subcommittee was presented an original price for this parking lot at $200,000. There was significant discussion in the committee. We didn't reach a uh, conclusion. On January 5th, 2022, we had a revision that was provided to us one day before the facilities subcommittee meeting, wherein the uh, price went from 200,000 to 260,000. This was pushed through into the full board for discussion. Uh, I, did, I did preside over that and I did approve that. Uh, the board was presented on January 19th, 2022, a $260,000 ask. And uh, any other, and, and that was what was supposed to go to the town council. It's my understanding that that proposal has been significantly inflated since that time. Any other time that's not two, uh, excuse me, any other price that's not two hundred and sixty thousand dollars was not approved by the board of education was never discussed, and its excess is beyond the scope of any pre uh, presentation as I identified. Uh, my um, my recommendation to the counselors is that any uh, request beyond the two hundred sixty thousand dollar ask should receive a heightened level of scrutiny uh, and you guys should pay very close attention beyond any amount past $260,000. Thank you uh, to the council and thank you, Mayor Del Buno. Have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. LeVarrier. Next, we have nobody in the room coming up. Okay. <laughs> Next, we have uh, Ms. Lyons. It says I'm hello. There you are. Gotcha, Rose. Rose Lyons, 46 Elton Drive. Am I on? I can't tell because TV is a little bit off here. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're good. Okay. All right. Um, as I said, Rose Lyons, 46 Elton Drive. I've been trying to hold back my coughing spells while watching this. If I didn't have a upper respiratory infection, I would be there tonight to say what I have to say. Um, first to Patty Foley. Um, Patty and I got to know each other through MCTV, and then we got even more familiar with each other as we sat during the CIP budget hearings, or the uh, actually the committee meetings prior to the actual budget being approved. Patty, you're amazing. I don't know how you do it. You're a wonderful person, a wonderful human being. Congratulations on your award, so well deserved. To Carol and Chris, there is so much more to those two people than is on that proclamation. I have known Carol for almost 20 years now. Uh, Chris, not as long, but I have grown to uh, appreciate and look to them for guidance and understanding of the various projects that are going on in town, and they've always been very helpful whenever I had any questions. Um, as I said, there's more to them that's on that, than on that proclamation. 
And while I know it's a generic one, it would have been nice, and I'm sorry if I'm being critical, but I have to say this, that if they could have gotten their separate proclamations rather than combined. Uh, in any case, congratulations to the other uh, people that received awards, especially the CERT team that I know has put thousands of hours into this town, especially during COVID. It's very much appreciated, and uh, once again, thank you for all you do, including the council. Take care, stay safe, stay well. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ms. Lyons. <clears throat> the next caller is Danielle Drozd. James, do you see that message that popped up? It's asking me to promote to panelist because her version doesn't allow her to talk otherwise. I mean, she's a board of ed member. I'll promote her to panelist. Let's see. Well, it says failed to change role to panelist. Okay. Technology. Ah, there gotcha. you are. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. Just do us a favor and state your name and address. Hi, right, Danielle Drozd, 74 Glenview Drive. I am also a member of the Board of Education. I do know that on the agenda tonight is to discuss the parking lot at John Wallace. So um, I'm just really hoping that at some point in time, the Board of Ed and the Town Council can get together and we can work on you guys taking over our facilities. I have brought it up at town, at, um, sorry, Board of Ed meetings, and I want us to focus on educating our students, and I would love for you guys to be more responsible for our facilities, and I hope that we can, at some point in time, come up with a way for that to happen um, so that we don't have these, these conversations over and over again about money and about, is this project where it needs to be and those kind of things. So um, I hope that we can get together, have a facilities meeting and get this going. So that's all I have to say. But, and I also wanna say thank you to all the people who um, got recognized tonight. I'm sorry, my not being able to get on got me confused. So Patty, awesome job. Thank you to the previous town councilors. So thank you to everyone. Thank you, Ms. Drozd. All right, the next member of the public is Anastasia Yap. Hello, Welcome, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, I'm Anastasia Yap. I'm at 138 8th Street, uh, Newington, Connecticut, and I am the uh, Chairman of Finance on the Board of Education. Uh, I want to say congratulations and thank you for everyone. Um, you know, for all you do, I know it's, you know, not easy, especially, you know, with all the things we've gone through, pandemic, war, and things like that. So thank you very much. Um, I'm calling in to talk about the John Patterson and possible John Wallace expansion project. Um, I was present on every meeting in regards to the facilities committee, as well as the board of education meetings. I haven't missed one. And originally the uh, price for the uh, parking lot was 200,000 and it did get moved to 260,000. Um, at no time was the board informed actually until today that it had moved, been moved to 450,000. Um, I did reach out to uh, Dr. Brummett and I explained to her, I think this needs to be brought back to the board for more discussion. So um, I'm asking that the town council, I know it has to go to TPZ, but I think the board needs to be able to review this because we had no knowledge of it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Yap. All right, I don't see any other hands here. Last call in the, in the room. Come on up, Ms. Nagel. Daryl Nagel, 1175 Willard Avenue, Newington. And I just wanted to let you know again about the Newington Townwide Tag Sale, June 11th, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. We have 40 people signed up so far, and we still have more space because it's your driveway. <laughs> and it's a great time to clean out those basements, closets, and garages for the Newington Townwide Tag Sale, which is sponsored by the Newington's 150th Anniversary Committee of Wichamon. So 
what you do if you want to have a tag sale is go to the Newington town of Newington site and scroll down to the bottom of the page and then it'll give you instructions and you can register on uh, you've read. Okay. Great. Thank you, Ms. Nagel. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you, everyone. We'll continue on with our agenda. Next item, any uh, email correspondence council that I'm not aware of? I didn't see any. I didn't. Okay. I was babysitting grandkids. I didn't sign in. But. All right. Aren't you lucky Chris this came with you? I've right? never been able to do this. Well, <laughs> <laughs> All right, next item is remarks by counselors on public participation. No takers? All right. Just clicking back over to my other window. Okay. Uh, we removed executive sessions, so we are moving on to consideration of old business. The first item is the health update regarding COVID 19. Yes, Mr. Chapman? You. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, as you all know, uh, we have been reporting to you each week uh, that COVID is uh, growing in our community and I guess around the world, you could say. And it, it's getting very serious to the point where virtually every day in the last, we'll say three weeks, we've had reports of town employees getting COVID. Uh, in all departments throughout the town, not just any particular one area. Um, I, I, I believe is still in the audience. Uh, she mm -hmm. was going to speak tonight, so I'm going to turn it over to her. Okay. She's coming on up to the microphone. Welcome, Megan. Very strange. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is so odd. <laughs> um, so I want to just, I know it's its not necessarily relevant to the current COVID um, situation, but um, it's still relevant to COVID. Uh, we would not have gotten through COVID without the volunteers sitting behind me, the ones on Zoom, the ones watching from home, one that's sitting in front of us. Um, and, you know, I've had the pleasure of working with all of those volunteers since, you know, in an emergency management capacity since 2012 or 2000, 2012. Um, and I already had a lot of, you know, respect for them, but after seeing the hours and the time and the dedication over the last two years, um, I, I mean, I'm incredibly proud and, um, constantly amazed by them. Like it became a full-time job for many of them. Um, and I just truly think they represent what's best about not only this town, but humanity in general. Um, so there's their shout out. Um, that's the good news. Um, the not so good news, um, uh, as Keith mentioned, um, our numbers are continuing to rise. We're last week's numbers were th uh, Thursday was at 41.4 per hundred thousand, um, which is the highest we've been since February. Um, however, the other central Connecticut health district towns are at 58 or 59. So we're doing something right. Um, uh, I know uh, we had to take some pretty aggressive actions. Um, like Keith mentioned, we've had a lot of internal cases um, so far this week. It feels like it's been the longest week ever. It's only Tuesday. We've only had three cases so far. Um, and a lot of the people that um, were out are, are now back. Um, so, but still three cases in two days is a lot less than we were having. Um, the reality is that this is gonna keep going. Um, this unfortunately is kind of a new reality and we're just gonna have to move and change and adapt right along with it. Um, so the biggest thing is, you know, if you're sick, stay home, which should pretty much be the, the goal for anyone, anytime. Um, and, uh, you know, we have a lot of exciting community events coming up, especially the last two months. I think there's something happening every weekend until the extravaganza pretty much. Um, and it would be a shame for anyone to miss out on that because they either have COVID or they've been exposed. Um, you know, follow the CDC guidelines for, you know, what you're supposed to do. You know, if you do get exposed and, um, oh, I also need to mention too, the shelf life on the test kits. Um, the expiration date that is printed on the test kits, the one that we received from the state, uh, they were, most of those dates were either early June um, or end of June, a couple of July ones. 
Um, they did issue a notice, um, which I'll be posting um, on our social media page uh, uh, probably tomorrow. Um, they extended the shelf life of it by three months. So if it was, you know, if the expiration date says June on it, um, you know, it should be good through uh, September. So I think that's really important to note because we did have a lot of people that were concerned with, you know, they we just handed them out and the expiration date on them. But for some reason, they decided to change the shelf life on it. So they should be good. That's good news. Thank you. Any <laughs> council comment or question? Councilor Manchin. Do we have a way of knowing how many citizens in Newington have had COVID over the last, since being in COVID? Uh, I do. I believe the health district has data on that, which I can get. I can try to that get. It would be interesting to know. <laughs> it seems like everybody I know has COVID uh, or, yeah. or have had, has had COVID once or twice. Right. right. I know that um, there's a list of addresses that we get. Um, I just, I would just, I don't want, I don't need to know who I have to, what yeah, neighbors right, I have to right. avoid. I just, I just um, want to, want the just numbers. Just a total, yeah. Um, I mean, no, out of a population of 30,000, how, what percentage of us have, have had COVID yeah, and what percentage of right. That's a really good question. So I'll follow up with um, Charlie Brown tomorrow. Yeah. And, if, yeah. It's a table, don't, don't, you know, don't knock yourself out of getting it, but if it's I something that, that can. So I'm guessing that would be an underestimate, though, because with all the home testing kits, not everybody necessarily. Right. Goes to the but it would still be interesting, interesting to know what the right. numbers were. Yeah. Yeah. I'll find out. OK, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. Mr. Did you have anything else on that or are we moving on? No, I just want to uh, point out that the way in which people are handling COVID now uh, it is obvious that the reporting of the numbers by the state are far lower than the reality, uh, both in getting tested and what individuals test positive, as well as those that have COVID. It never does, in many cases, does not get reported any longer. So, uh, you know, if we're at uh, 41 or 42 out of 100,000 right now, we really could be you know, 10 times that and we wouldn't even know it. So it is very serious and it's it's something that is really almost out of control in my mind. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, folks, we're gonna move on to the update on the ARPA project funding. <clears throat> As you know, uh, at our last meeting, we were presented uh, with three proposals regarding the use of the ARPA funds. One, to expand the existing town fiber optics broadband network. The second one was the back indexing of the town land records. And then the last one was the proposed drainage improvement projects for Pheasant Run, Fisk and Gilbert and Moreland Drive, in addition to the acquisition of a CCTV inspection um, piece of equipment. Um, we do have a resolution in our packet right. this evening. Go ahead, Councilor Mankey. Resolved. The new town council hereby endorses the use of American Rescue Plan Act ARPA funds for the following program slash uses. One, town fiber optic slash broadband network. Two, town land records back indexing. Three, drainage improvement projects, Pheasant Run, Fisk and Gilbert and Moreland, Moreland Drive and CT, T, CT, CCTV inspection equipment. Second. Seconded by Councilor Nagel. Any discussion on this? Only that I think we've got Moreland Drive in on, pay, on one page and Moreland spelled differently. I think it's Moreland, M-O-R-E-L-A-N-D Avenue. The Moreland Drive that I didn't right. don't know about. So it should be M-O-R-E-L-A-N-D Avenue. Okay. I didn't realize it was an avenue. That's interesting. Okay. Are you looking at I'm just going to try to, but I'm afraid I'm going to mess up. I was, you know, with all, with some of the new developments, I wanted, I checked online, but I didn't see anything come up for Newington for Moreland Drive. Well, it's right over by me, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's um, off of Walsh. I mean, off of uh, Wilson. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it is Moreland Avenue. Okay. 
So, Mr. Mink, so I will, I will amend my, my motion to read Moreland, M, excuse me, M O R L A N D F. Second. And the second by Councilor Nagel. Nagel is uh, for the amended motion. Any further discussion? I need your crown. I know we got a good um, presentation last week from Ms. Murphy on this, so we're good with it. Ms. Ratta, you're all set, Councilor Ratta, right? Yes. Yeah, it was just the, yeah, it's, it's Moreland Avenue. Okay. Yeah. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. The next item this evening is the annual appointment of the auditor. Uh, we were presented this last week. Um, as you know, in the spring of 2019, the town had issued a RFP for audit services for the fiscal year ending um, of June 30th, 2019, and for three subsequent years. Um, as a result, the RFP, uh, the firm of Clifton Larson Allen, formerly Bloom Shapiro, was selected as the town's independent auditor, and they must be reappointed each year. Uh, this is the final year of the four-year agreement. Uh, this item appears uh, tonight on the counts on our agenda for consideration. We do have the resolution in front of us. Who would like to go ahead and read that in? Councilor Nagel. Resolved per section 610 of the Newington Town Charter, the firm of Clifton Larson Allen LLP, formerly Bloom Shapiro, is hereby appointed as auditor for the town of Newington for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2022. Said firm agrees to file a complete report on or before December 15, 2022. Second. Second by Councilor Rada. Any discussion on this one? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Counter page log off. Okay, so. No, I'm here. I, I, I said I. I'm sorry. I didn't hit my button. Okay, thank you. Motion passes unanimously. All right. Next item is the John Patterson parking lot improvement 8 24 referral. Um, as you know, we had a presentation last week. Um, from Mr. Giacomo, it's from the Board of Education's Finance Department. Um, and he reviewed with us the board's plan um, for a parking lot expansion at the John Patterson Elementary School. Um, they presented us with the plans and they are asking that the council consider uh, moving the project onto Town Plan and Zoning Commission for their review under the statute, the 8-24 statute. Um, uh, as you heard earlier this evening, there were um, some Board of Ed members that did log on that were concerned about the cost of the project. And if I'm on, being honest, I did mention that at our last meeting that I was a little surprised to see the price tag at 450000 But um, quite frankly, that's not under our purview as a council. It is being paid for not by town CIP or by um, other budgetary dollars, but by the Board of Ed um, Capital Improvement Plan. Um, and it was approved through their body. So um, if there is a question about the cost of the project, and I and I do I do hear the questions out there and I understand why it's being questioned, um, but I uh, um, I guess if the board was not aware of the amount, then they need to take that up at the board of ed table because the, the cost and the spending piece is not under our purview as a council. Um, the only thing that we do in terms of dollars for the board of education is to approve uh, the dollar amount for their entire budget, and then it is up to them as to how they spend it. We do not have purview over that. Um, so I just wanted to be clear on that because yes, I share the concerns that were mentioned, um, but I um, am letting the Board of Ed members know I hear you, but you are gonna need to take that up at your table. Unfortunately, that's not our job. Um, Mr. Giacomo, are you, you're on, right? Yes, I am. Okay, um, did you wanna just quickly um, for the public's sake mention what the project entails? I know it's 30 additional spots, but there are some other improvements being made as well. Sure, uh, appreciate doing that. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, the project that the Board of Ed uh, is uh, considering doing uh, and requested the A24 review on was to provide an uh, expansion of the parking lots lot area at John Patterson School. Right now, there are about 75 spaces there, plus a few handicap uh, designated spots. And this will add a net 30 spaces to the overall plan to bring us up to 105 uh, 
designated regular spaces. And I believe it increases our uh, ADA compliance spaces by two. Uh, it does correct two ADA deficiencies. I wouldn't necessarily call them a, uh, uh, a violation. Uh, is on the west entrance out of the cafeteria. It is not on grade. So no one with disabilities could exit that area. So this, uh, uh, the sidewalk that is was added to the project in this area was gonna be modified to the elevation necessary to make that on grade and be able to address any ADA considerations. Also around the front of the school, uh, the current ADA spaces are uh, much closer to the student entrance. Uh, we've been advised and uh, requested to move those spaces to basically in front of the uh, main office doors. So that would be going as far west as possible in the front lot. The uh, overall uh, configuration, uh, the biggest benefit is the substantial, if not complete, elimination of uh, on-street backups of cars trying to queue into the school in the morning. Uh, because the current pathway in is at the west side entrance on Halloran Drive, it is within a couple hundred feet of the intersection with uh, Church Street. So when there are the morning backups right now, all those cars spill all the way back to the uh, intersection, which makes it very congested, uh, very chaotic with uh, young kids walking through parent drop off, parents uh, chaperoning kids to school every day. And that was one of the largest uh, deficiencies we were trying to correct. As part of the redesign and the evolution, uh, the original concept of uh, just putting in the additional parking spaces uh, was let's correct all the uh, uh, access issues with the uh, traffic considerations. So in conjunction with our uh, security director, Mike Morgan, who's former policeman in town, uh, uh, decided on an approach that would have a one-way entrance from the Church Street side, taking as much of the traffic as possible away from the, C the uh, Church Street uh, Halloran entrance and create a queuing lane all the way along the west side of the school where you can have approximately 18 cars queued up at any point in time. Instead of trying to force that traffic back out to Church Street, uh, we're going to continue the uh, project and have it intersect the front uh, uh, driving area coming in by cutting out uh, a small section of uh, asphalt for, excuse me, not asphalt, concrete for the existing sidewalks, and then forcing all of the traffic to depart the site through the east side entrance of on Halloran Drive from John Patterson School. This would be closer to John Wallace. Uh, as they depart. So it would provide a very long and off street uh, uh, traffic management strategy for the school. Uh, the rest of it is just very deteriorated uh, blacktop on the uh, rear side of the school. And since the project scope moved to uh, create the access way through the front area, uh, all of the front was added as well for just a uh, milling and repaving. So uh, the, all of the uh, modifications suggested and supported and we've been able to design into the project truly uh, gives the school something it's never had before. Uh, it's taken them out of the spot where, you know, staff members and visitors, visitors are uh, either parking on street or across Patriot Lane or over uh, in the grass and potentially the mud uh, on the uh, southern side of the school. Uh, this will also be very helpful uh, for the alternate use of the school in uh, nice weather conditions where there's a lot of youth sports that are conducted behind John Patterson in that area. And this would certainly create a more conducive and safe environment for everybody in town uh, with doing this. Uh, a number of the uh, uh, circulation that's in the west lot as it where you would come in, queue up on the sidewalk all the way along. If you were coming and looking for a parking space, you would circle back. And then if there's no spaces there, you would then loop back again and go down the uh, queuing strip along the side of the building and exit out of the front uh, of the building 
And if there's parking spaces up in front, they'd be able to take advantage of that. So those are really the key uh, essentials to the uh, project. Uh, the uh, review and the uh, delineation of the right things to do are, you know, very much included in the project. Uh, I look at this as very proudly as uh, something to participate in that really does justice for the school and benefits everybody in town. So there is uh, uh, a lot of good to come out of this if this were to move forward. So uh, with that, I'm more than happy to answer any questions anybody has. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor Bedrago. Um, yes, I, uh, even though um, our responsibility as a council is to just give a, a general, um, oh, uh, oh, oh, no, you're good. No, you're okay. good. Um, is to you know give an overall amount of money to the Board of Education and they're allowed to spend it as appropriate. Um, I, I do believe that it is a resp responsibility if we, if we have a question, I mean, it is taxpayer money. It's, it's, it all comes out of, of our taxpayer pocket. So I do believe it is, we do have the purview and we do have the right to question things if we feel that there's an issue, even if you know, we, we can't, don't have the ability, let's say change or modify, I do think we have a responsibility <clears throat> as guardians of the town's pocketbook to say to question. So um, I, I don't think it's out of our scope to be able to question costs. And I do thank you, um, um, Mr. Giacomowitz, um, because original for this explanation, because originally, I mean, and there has been a lot of chatter on Facebook or whatever, and people saying, you know, almost half a million dollars for 30 spaces, but in your explanation regarding the fact that it went, the scope moved beyond just 30 spaces of milling um, to some safety improvements, curbing, um, the pass through um, and circulation improvements. Um, I'm assuming that's why the price, in addition to just the, um, the cost of materials now, I'm assuming the um, increased scope of the project is what contributed to the price. So um, I really I don't have an issue with that. I'm assuming you know the, the bids went out to the way they need to be and this is a, a valid cost. Um, but the, um, the thing that did kind of just concern me a little bit today is during public participation, when uh, three members of the Board of Education seemed, who were on the finance or the, and or facilities, seemed to be unaware of the fact that the cost that was approved almost doubled. And I'm just not, I mean, I think as a, as a council member, if there's something like that happened here, I, I would have wanted to have become aware of it um, with an explanation. Um, so again, that, that kind of concerns me a little bit that if, if these members of the Board of Education who called in are in fact saying that they weren't aware of the fact that the price almost doubled, that quite frankly concerns me. But in terms of the overall project, I, I, I support moving it forward. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. You want to... Councilor Camillo. Hi, Lou. How are you? Hi. Good evening, Mike. <clears throat> um, since you're going to have the ground open, and I didn't see this on your plans, I got a couple questions. The ballards by the transformer on the east side are they going to be removed? It, uh, let me just give you the whole list I've got here. Okay. And then, are you going to have pole-mounted security cameras? With in conduit, are the, the data lines for that going to be overhead? Are we going to be connected to the fiber optic within the town, or is it going to start connecting between the schools? And one more thing I've noticed um, electric vehicle chargers, since you're, you're already there, um, could you pre pipe and Get that all in conduit. So when the time comes, if you don't plan on it now, um, have the boxes ready. And the electrical that's already in the ground, is it going to be buried or a chaseway or conduit? Okay. That's Those are all the questions, Mike? Yeah. Okay. Uh, your first question uh, was about the... I'm sorry, I can ask you to just go back and repeat them one at a time uh, so I can respond accordingly. The ballards that are in front of the yep. transformer on the east side. 
right? The bollards will stay or be relocated to fit the new design. We do have the uh, dumpster location that is going to be in with a privacy fencing around it in that area to be able to allow the vehicles to get at it for servicing the uh, dumpsters, as well as just a visual privacy screen to make it as aesthetically appealing as possible. Uh, we do have walkways that will continue around the west side of that area, as well as on the north side uh, that's there. So there will be bollards uh, in conjunction with just protecting the transformer. It's all going to be to the CLMP standards, and that uh, has kind of driven the location of the sidewalk that is on uh, that side of the building. Okay, uh, cool. you know, it will be, you know, as I said, up to all of the Eversource codes for access and servicing requirements for the transformers. Okay, uh, pole mounted security cameras, the conduit is <coughs> going to be overhead uh, or? There will be, it will probably be uh, on the, uh, mounted on the building <coughs> rather than on the poles. Uh, okay. The highest uh, need area would be monitoring the drop-off areas around the building. So that would be the west side sidewalk. And the cameras we have today with their resolution and uh, you know five megapixels, uh, we have plenty of range to cover all the way to Church Street with the building mounted cameras. So there's, there's not really a need to do that unless we wanted a shot of the area from a different angle. Right, would they be LPR cameras, uh, license plate reader? It could be depending on how, uh, uh, Mr. Morgan actually uh, puts his plan together for this area. Uh, okay. We do have some of those around the building, not around the different schools. So I don't know exactly where this one is. It's probably on the front side somewhere. And then the overhead wires that are, are there, are you going to bring those and put those under the ground? Yes, those will be coming underground as part of the project. Those are just uh, telco wires right now. Uh, we do have a fiber optic connection that services both John Patterson and John uh, Wallace that goes mm -hmm. through the area on the west side of the school. Uh, that uh, access point for the uh, fiber company uh, has already been relocated. So it's up against the building now. So it'll be out of the way for any, uh, uh, you know, activities that go on, uh, mm -hmm. presuming the project moves forward. Okay. And then electric vehicle chargers. Uh, uh, we could certainly look at that. I have to speak to our, uh, engineer. Uh, well, the, the reason I'm at, the reason I'm asking, um, mm -hmm. there's money from the state right now mm -hmm. that would help you with that. So okay. it wouldn't be a, really a cost to Fort of Ed or the town. Um, okay, I will certainly look there. at that tomorrow. Yeah, I have no problem with uh, uh, doing that. I know we were talking about it with regards and in conjunction with the electric bus programs that they're putting out there, and. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, looking at the viability of doing that. So you would be looking for us to try to put one a charging station somewhere on the premises? If, it, if you can get the, you know, it's the money for it from the state or mm -hmm. the federal government, yes. And, and okay. it'd be more than one because you will have buses that, oh, we just ran out of power and we're stuck at the school. So mm -hmm. when okay. it comes to that. Okay, I will uh, look at that tomorrow morning. And, and then uh, the other thing was, you do have wires that are under the ground right now crossing the parking lot. Correct. That, uh, are they going to be put in a conduit or are you just going to bury them just like they are already because of the depth, you don't yeah. really know how deep they are. Right, we've had all that evaluated uh, by uh, Badger Daylighting for the depths and everything is uh, in fine condition. The only one that we needed to move because of depth was the one for the uh, fiber optics, because when it came up on its sweep to ground level, it was right in an area where we were wanted to put the sidewalk. So uh, they were plenty deep for uh, uh, what we would need to do because the, actually that area west of the school is a little bit bowl shaped. It's down about two feet at its mm -hmm. lowest point from uh, the elevation. So we're gonna be filling with uh, gravel and uh, soil fill over the top. So the depths that we have were more than enough based on where the future uh, uh, final elevation is going to be. Thanks, Lou. Okay. All right, Councillor Mankey. Just a couple quick questions. Uh, sure. I speak. I speak from uh, selfish reasons. 
Will there be a, a designated pickup for the preschool? It's like during the day. Occasionally, I have to go pick up a, a preschool um, mm -hmm. student during the day, and I can never find a place to park. Okay, right. With the uh, new long west side uh, uh, pickup drop off area that we're having, uh, in all likelihood, the preschool part of it will be at the back entrance adjacent to where the uh, uh, Ballard area is with where the dumpsters are on the south side of the building. Uh, there will be the sidewalk will swing around the building on that side. So there would be safe path of travel for all little kids. Uh, you know, we also have to, you know, consider <coughs> three schools that are associated with NECI and depending on which year it is uh, and uh, the general enrollment, you know, that tends to move around town based on where there's available space for them. So I know for next year, we have to take the take two preschool classes that were formerly at Anna Reynolds and house them at John Patterson for the duration of the Anna Reynolds project. So uh, that was very much in our uh, overall uh, conceptualization of the project and trying to develop, you know, really those safety elements where we get a, a lot of cars off the street. We provide a very comfortable and safe walking path around where there's no need to cross even the parking lots. You know, the sidewalk will go to the front entrance to the back entrance without having any reason for uh, a student to step off the curb uh, and into the parking area or the driving lane uh, for the, uh, the vehicles. So, you know, as we were just putting together the ideas and you know, brainstorming how to make this really an excellent uh, design for the benefit of the school and the you know, all the uh, community members that use it. Uh, those were foremost in our thought process. Okay, thanks. I just, just a, a thought for, just for one confused grandfather when he picks up his grandson, if you had a <laughs> sign saying how to do that and where I could park <laughs> temporarily, uh, that would, would, would make my life much easier because most of us people picking up <laughs> someone in the middle of the day have no clue what to do. Uh, and Yours is a midday, oh, Tim? Only, I'm only picking up because it's, Maybe the grandson's sick, and so I'm picking okay. up and on, on it scheduled. But you go and you knock on the back door, and if someone happens to see you, usually a student will mm -hmm. get someone. But otherwise, I'm just standing yeah. there waiting to pick up somebody. And it's, it's right, those are some of the chaotic situations. Mm -hmm. People are will grab any parking space anywhere, and they will walk to the closest door. And there is a lot of that uh, churn of activity to try to support the community as best as possible. Uh, obviously with the security elements that we have on the building for, uh, you know, being able to funnel all traffic through the front doors for vetting purposes. Uh, and, and that would be great. If have a, you know, we just, we just don't have the right one size fits all arrangement right now. Uh, okay. because I know I've been there a few days in the mornings just to kind of see how it goes and where the real problem areas are. And it's, you know, it's an adventure every day to say the least. Right. So I the certainly appreciate and know the, your concern. The other question I have is, has this project already started? I, I drove by and I see the three trees have been cut down, or I assume the parking lot is going. Well, they weren't cut down because of the parking lot. They were cut down because they were diseased. So okay. that was for those were for the two on the west side. We do have the ones, and there were two other ones that were on the south side uh, by the entrance that were also cut down. Those two were not diseased, but uh, with the... <clears throat> moving the parking lot a few feet that was not they were not going to survive uh, right. in that environment so they had to go but we will be replanting uh appropriate uh trees and shrubbery you know once presuming everything gets done here okay and just one observation i did drive by uh john patterson uh, on church street on saturday and i noticed that a lot of people for the sports teams were parking on the grass even though there were at that point parking plenty of parking available on the the, the asphalt Mm -hmm. So I'd assume that you're going to put some sign up that there's no parking on the grass because it, one of these days something's going to get stuck in the mud. Yes. And it's going to ruin the aesthetics of the school. <laughs> and we're surprised it hasn't happened yet. And I know one I, of the yeah, other big I, things. I frankly we, have too. Right. That we're trying to alleviate is there are typically a lot of cars that will go down the backside of the school and go out into the big uh, <clears throat> children's play area there, which is not, you know, doesn't have any attributes for traffic control of any type. So we're going to try to really put a stop to it there. And by having adequate number of parking spaces in, in the general area, it'll 
kind of remove the incentive for, you know, going all the way down uh, that's there. Okay. And I have no objection to send this to TPZ. Thank you, Councilor Page. Thank you, Mayor. I just had a question. Actually, you probably addressed these issues on, with uh, Councilor Mankey's questions. Uh, I didn't know if you could say any more about your consultations with our police department relative to traffic flow and how this parking lot will improve that, as well as just pedestrian safety and safety for our kids. If there's anything sure. else to be said about that. Yeah, no, certainly. Yeah, at the school, uh, we have a dedicated uh, full year uh, security guard which is basically the traffic proctor morning and afternoon and sometimes midday to uh, address all of the comings and goings of people and keeping everybody in line and trying to create a safe queue for uh, general activity. Uh, also our security director, uh, Michael Morgan, is a former uh, Newington police officer who's well-versed in what it takes to have safe and appropriate uh, conditions around the schools and the uh, chronic difficulties in the Church Street, Halloran Drive area, you know, date back a number of years. And as we were uh, working through the concept of this project, Mike was, you know, a big part of that discussion, along with uh, Principal Gatos and their uh, security uh, uh, staff member uh, at the time to provide pictorial evidence as far as what was going on at different times of the day, how severe uh, the parking is where cars were parking as alternate locations because we have only 75 spaces for, you know, a typical daily need of around 100 and, you know, more when there's bigger events and uh, other situations which would draw people to the school. So uh, all of these uh, observations and uh, communications from everybody play, came into play. We also ran this by uh, Officer Ryan Dean of the police department uh, and asked him to uh, uh, you know, evaluate and his opinion about the safety and the appropriateness of the plan design. And he was fully in favor of it. You know, I can't remember exactly what his title is for uh, you know, traffic safety, but he has, a, you know, a, uh, uh, he's like the lead person for traffic evaluations in uh, uh, just uh, the merits of different requests that are made. So uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly what his uh, job title is. His title is traffic authority right now. Yeah, but traffic, yeah, okay. Local traffic, I, I, thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate what you and the superintendent and our board of ed are doing to keep our kids safe with this project and everything else you do. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, any other council comment? Um, I just wanted to add, I did ask just so the council knows, I know during our discussion last uh, last meeting, I had asked about the library parking lot, um, just as a compare for comparison sake, based on cost and that kind of thing. And um, Janet did send me the information. She said that the library lot was similar in size. Um, the total cost was 286,000 um, and 50,000 of that was for an after it was finished kind of fix for the drainage issues that they had. So the total was 286. Um, my only thought, Lou, is I, I don't know, it, this project did jump quite a bit in price and is the timing right for it or not? Or would we be, be better served to look at a temporary solution um, until prices perhaps start to come down. I don't know, with COVID and the demands uh, for materials and all of that, if, um, I don't know, I guess when I hear Board of Ed members telling me they thought it was 260 and now it's 450 and um, it does sound like there were some changes made to the plan, but if it really is um, something that, you know, um, I know there's parking lots at Holy Spirit and, uh, you know, right in that neighborhood that perhaps we could access as a um, temporary solution if that we thought the price would come down in some regard if we waited a little bit, but that's not our decision. That's just food for thought because I know that's a board of ed decision and it sounds like the board of ed members want to talk about it a little more, or at least get an update. Certainly. So, yeah. um, and I didn't mean Deputy Mayor to Padre, but it suggest that we don't have the right to ask. We should be asking the questions. Mm -hmm. I'm just wanted for the public's knowledge to know that what's before us tonight is simply just sending this to TPZ for consideration. It has mm -hmm. nothing to do with us approving funding or anything like that, because I think there was some misconception or some question out there as to what our role is as a council. And our role tonight before us is just the referral to TPZ, not the approval of the expenditure, so right. to speak. I appreciate you saying that, Mayor, because I'm, I'm new to this process. Mm -hmm. and 
as are, it sounds like the board of ed members who just need education on how that works. Cause I, I need it too. And I appreciate the feedback. Well, yeah, if I could, I, you know, it's, I know there's the curiosity and uh, I certainly uh, am willing to share, you know, some of the key points uh, of the dollars that are here. Typically we always share these first with our board members, but given the circumstances and the timing of this, uh, I feel perfectly, you know, fine sharing that, you know, of the, three major things that have changed since the project was essentially uh, moved forward in January is the uh, addition of the sidewalk all the way along the school. You know, initially the project just had a parking lot over on that side with no uh, connection to the front. It was just a freestanding parking lot that would either have a, uh, a single exit out onto Church Street or a loop back with a two-way entrance exit at the current location of the south end. That sidewalk and related work, you know, is uh, you know in excess of eighty thousand uh, dollars toward the project. Since we were now intruding into the front parking area and needing to do uh, modifications to the uh, asphalt in that area in the general condition, uh, the price proposal added that front area to be the a, a mill and overlay, which was not in the original concept. And I don't have exact prices, but I would estimate that would be in the vicinity of $50,000 to do that. Uh, and then the third part is just the insidious effect of inflation over the last four months. Uh, you know, we've seen it in everything that we touch at the Board of Ed. And, uh, you know, my professional judgment on this is I would think that from January till now, we probably experienced a 10% increase in what the cost of the project would be. So between those three items, that is, 90% of the uh, cost difference from the starting point till uh, the estimate that we're, we think it's gonna come in at now. We still have uh, uh, one bid that's outstanding that we'll get on Friday uh, for the project. So I can't be absolutely certain, but I think I'm covered in anything it'll, I have enough or a little too much in that area to cover it. So the, uh, the expansion of the project you know, is adding the whole sidewalk system all the way up and down the west side of the school, the redoing or the mill and overlay for the front lot, and unfortunately, inflation that all of us have to address. Okay, thanks for addressing that, Lou. I appreciate it. No problem. No question. Any other questions, Councilor Camilla? One more thing. I know um, your board asks for information often, and there's a delay in them getting it, or they don't get it at all. In the future, could you make an effort to make sure they get that? And the same thing when we, we we ask the same thing and sometimes we never get to see it because we get busy with something else and forget to get back to you. Okay. Thank yeah. you. My pleasure. All right, we did not read the motion yet, did we? No, we didn't. All right, Councilor Vidrico, would you like to do that for me? Or, or... Resolved that the Newington Town Council hereby directs and authorizes Keith Chapman, town manager, to refer the matter of John Patterson Elementary School parking lot expansion project to the Town Planning and Zoning Commission for its report in accordance with Section 8-24 of the Connecticut General Statutes. Second. Seconded by Councillor Menke. Any further discussion? Just so the public understands, this is a referral to TPZ. They'll consider it, and they will come back with a report to the council. So we'll come back to this table again for a final approval. I don't see any other hands up. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Lou. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, Thank ready? you. All right. Have a great day. Okay. You too. All right. Next <clears throat> item is the agent of record for PCL insurance coverage for the town of Newington. Um, you will see for property casual property casualty and liability. I had to think about PCL. All right. Um, we did um, the item was presented to us at our last meeting for discussion. We have the resolution in front of us. Um, this is us to appoint the firm of USI Insurance Services as our agent of record. Um, you see the um, the cost estimates in front of us in our packet this evening. So for three years, it's $17,500 for each of the three years. Is Janet on? I don't know if there's anything she wants to add. It. Okay. This would be under her. Oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> so we do have the motion in front of us. Who would like to go ahead and read that? Councilor Donahue? Resolved. Pursuant to section 8-28, 
of the Lincoln Code of Ordinances, the Lincoln Town Council hereby appoints the firm of USI Insurance as the agent of record for the town of Lewington for the period of July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2025, for the purposes of soliciting, negotiating, placing, overseeing, and monitoring the town's property, me, property casual liability insurance package. The fee for this appointment shall be as follows. 2022, 2023, 17,500. 2023, 2024, 17,500. 2024 through 2025, 17,500. Second. Seconded by Councilor Nagel. Um, Councilor Mankey, I know you um, kind of uh, gave us more information on this last time. Is there anything you'd like to add? No, I, I chair this committee and we, we did meet with the uh, with the USI um, and we they are the, the people we use now. We have no problem with them. Um, they, they were doing good service for us, um, so we were we would be happy with with putting them back in for another three years. Okay, and this was an RFP process. It was correct. RFP, yes. Okay. Any other <coughs> questions or comment, councilors? Okay, seeing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. All right, we are moving on now to uh, refunds. Deputy Mayor Bedrico. Resolved that property tax refunds in the amount of $63.53 are hereby approved in the individual amounts and for those named on request for refund of an overpayment of taxes certified by the revenue collector, a list of which is attached to this resolution. Second. Second on Council Rada. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Oh, yep. okay. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, we are on now to minutes of previous meetings. I would entertain a motion to accept the May 10th, 2022 regular meeting minutes, February 22nd, 2022 <clears throat> regular meeting minutes. So moved. Second. Moved by Councillor May uh, Camillo, I think I heard. No, right. Rada. Rada. Seconded so by him too. Council Camilla. Sorry. Okay, so motion made by Councilor Rada, seconded by Councilor Camillo. Any discussion on these minutes? I know we've long awaited February 22nd. We have any comment or discussion? Had a little difficulty getting a hold of it, but we finally resolved the problem. And Good. I read the minutes, so they're finally there. All right. No corrections for us? No. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. We are now on to new business and we have uh, the first item this evening is a tax fixing agreement for Pike Apartment Complex. Mr. Chapman? Yes, I'm very pleased and proud to announce that we've uh, reached the point where a tax fixing agreement uh, has been developed through negotiations between the assessor's office, Steve Sikowski, as well as uh, our assessor, Fauna um, Eller, and myself. And uh, the developers have requested that this tax be presented to you for consideration. Uh, we believe it is in the best interest of the town to move forward with it. It will involve a new development down on Payne Road. Um, and I believe James has a, a sheet on exactly what is being proposed down there. Can you put that up, uh, James? Do you want the mapping, Mr. Chapman, or the um, the dollar figure chart? Either one. We'll we'll go through it either way. Okay. We're gonna start with the dollars. Okay. Start with the dollars. Okay, as you can see, and again, this was negotiated over a number of months to get to where we are, where, um, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to let Steve take this one. Uh, we have others that I'll come back to. Uh, Steve, are you available? I am. Good evening. Um, <clears throat> this project is being done by, compared with some there? of the other developments that we brought to you for tax fixing agreements. The company is uh, significantly smaller than most of the other developers. And as such, um, to get this agreement to a point where 
it was comfortable on both sides did take much, much longer than uh, either one of us expected. Further complicating this was the supply okay. chain issues that the developer was facing with significant, and I, I can't stress that enough, significant cost increases from when he first initially was proposing this development. Um, as such, I did agree to go a little bit higher than initially uh, the agreement that I offered him. And that's why you see the assistance in the form of the fixed assessment is at a level of 43%. What we tried to do is uh, try to address some of his additional increase because of those supply chain issues. Um, the other significant issue that he wanted was a little bit more detail than, again, some of the other scenarios that we had presented to you. Um, we agreed upon a, a best guesstimate as far as what the mill rates would be moving forward, taking into consideration that we had revaluations in 2025 and 2030, which you then see as reductions to the prior year. Um, he was very, very pleased when he found out that uh, certainly this last year was yet another decrease in the mill rate that Mr. Chapman brought forward to you folks. So I did mention that as something to consider, but he still wanted to build in some safeguards. So we did, we did build in a, uh, a slight increase in the mill rate on an annual basis. So what you see in front of you is a 43% tax fixing agreement that extends out 10 years. Um, the town is still going to be netting out over a 10 year period, approximately $4.4 million based upon the, these conditions. I think also just to point out that after the 10th year, the abatement goes away. So uh, the gross uh, revenue will all come to the town uh, <coughs> year rather than sharing with the developer. Right. We have a couple other slides. Uh, James, can you bring them up? Okay, this is the lay layout of the development. Uh, it's along Payne Road at the corner of Maselli. Uh, it's uh, should serve the community well. Now there has been a change made in that the uh, entrance will be on Payne Road, not on Maselli Road, I believe. Uh, is that correct, Steve? The last approved plan I saw was access off of Payne, yes. Yeah, so there's a slight change. This was an earlier version. We didn't receive a, a newer version yet from the developer. Uh, next slide. Okay, that, okay, now these are the specifics of the development itself. It's, it's about a $40 million project, about 150 units. Uh, um, and the uh, developer has activity both in New York and Florida. And it would be a four story, two building development to be constructed at the corner of Payne and Mathelli on a five acre lot that's currently vacant. Um, it would include one bedroom and two bedroom units and 10% of the units would be designated as workforce affordable housing for people earning up to 80% of the area median income. Uh, planning and zoning and all of the other approvals have been uh, already uh, uh, passed. And so the final uh, activity is the issuing of the building permits and the approval of the tax fixing agreement. These will be, uh, according to the plans, the apartments will offer high-end finishes, including nine-foot ceilings, open floor plans, large windows, in laundry or in-unit laundry, open kitchens with high-end appliances and breakfast bars. The amenities will include large furnished lobbies, lounges, community room, fitness center, and outdoor recreational area. So it's going to be a real nice development that, uh, from what from what I'm told and what I read, uh, the Hartford region is in dire straits concerning getting new apartment complexes into the area. So this will address some of the need that's out there existing right now. And it will increase the value of our grand list, which will increase our revenues from this point forward. 
And as I point out, after 10 years, we really get a bonus at that point. So and that's about it. If you have any questions, uh, uh, Fawn is with us. Uh, she's our new assessor to replace Steve. I want her here tonight to answer any questions you may have that she could answer and as well as Steve and myself. Okay, thank you. Counselors, any comments or questions at this point? I have one quick comment. Um, you, uh, I just, I appreciate, I noticed that 10% of units would be uh, deemed as workforce affordable housing. And I know that's been a goal for us to hit that magic number of 10% and it keeps changing for us, uh, especially based on the census. So I'm glad to see that's built into the project as well. Um, in terms of your work on this, um, Mr. Chapman and Steve and Fauna, I appreciate um, you going, and as Steve mentioned, this was a lengthy process, but um, it's certainly worth the effort when you see the 10-year um, plan and what it nets for Newington. Um, while we're giving them a little bit of a break, it still nets a significant amount for us um, here in town and brings forward a project that is um, certainly going to add to our community. So I appreciate your efforts in this. It, it looks great to me. I'm, I'm in favor of this. Uh, Councilor Page, did you have something? Yes, thanks, Mayor. Um, how much, I know when we gave the tax abatement to 3333 Berlin Turnpike, a uh, selling point for me was the retail income that would be coming to us. How much retail is involved in this project? None, this is solely residential. So how is this different than the other seven or 800 apartments that we're building in Newington? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's a different location and that's important to people that live in these apartment complexes. Um, it, it is it, the big benefit for us is it will provide uh, necessary housing, it will provide revenue, and there'll be a workforce that hopefully will be needed to address some of the other developments that are going through the process right, process right now. So uh, it's a benefit in all regards, in my opinion, um, and this is what we've been looking for. Uh, and uh, it's, it, there's really no negative to it. Uh, you know, we've, we've got the projections from the schools as to how many students, and I've already given that information to you in the past, how many students would be generated out of this particular project. And, uh, um, you know, we've had the police report. Uh, it's really not a negative uh, that, I, that I know of to this being built in Newington. And what is the criteria for? What I'd is also the criteria? Like to add that um, he was specifically uh, comparing this to the apartments at three 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 Berlin Turnpike. Two points to consider. Um, number one is the affordable component. There is not one at thirty three thirty three, and as the mayor had indicated, we are trying to increase our affordable units across town. And number two, the price point for this entire complex is something a little bit less than those at 3333. So most of the apartment complexes that are, are being brought forward for approvals um, are all at a variety of different price points, which in my opinion is exactly what this town needs. It just gives us, or a potential tenant in any of these buildings, a real choice as to just basically how much they want to spend for you know, a particular apartment. What is the criteria for affordable housing? Who sets that standard? The state of Connecticut does, correct? Yeah, I believe the state of Connecticut has certain standards that they are looking for. And we are uh, deficient right now in the number of affordable housing units in the town, but uh, we've been striving to get that increase to meet at the goal of, a, of I believe it's 10% within the town of Newington. So this will help out significantly. And did you say, Keith, I just wanted to make sure I understood that that the state's criteria for defining affordable housing is 80% of the area's median income? That's what I my understanding is, yes. Okay, do you know where that's located? Is that in the statute or is that, what doc, can I get a copy of that? Well, I, I can get you, yeah, I don't know where it is, it is you know, at this time, yeah. what department or whatever we can get you that information certainly all right thanks and last question who owns that property right now uh i i don't know the official owners of the property uh steve Birch. do you know or Birch something 
Birch White, I think it is. Who is it? It's Birch White. Is there a person we know who owns that? Yeah. I'll see. But there's no people we know who own that. Up on Concord through the okay, state. Okay, so that's a mystery. Okay, thank and you. The name of the company is contained within the agreement that we provided you. Okay, um, can we find that out? Mm -hmm. uh, what are you looking for exactly? I just didn't know who owns the property. I was just curious. Okay, if, can you can you put up James on the on the screen the tax fixing agreement? It'll say in there who owns the property. Okay, let's see. We may have to read a bit. Uh, can you scroll down until we see if it shows who owns the property? It may not, now that I think about it, because this really is an agreement. It's an agreement with the developer. And the developer. Well, we don't know who owns it. Maybe I, we could just find that out. We can get that information for you. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah, the agreement right now is for the developer that's brought forward the project. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it, if it lists the current owner that's selling the property. So the, uh, so the property's already been sold to the developer? I'm sorry? Has the property already been sold to the developer, the developer no, owns? This is part of what the developer needs to go forward with the purchase. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. And based upon the affordable housing, we actually just uh, just um, approved a housing plan, uh, which we do have a link for it on the website. So I will make sure the council all gets a link to that document. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Bedrako. Um, yes, you, you indicated that this is a small developer um, and, um, and as a small developer, um, I guess it, it is contained within the, the agreement that should this developer within, you know, three, four or five years, whatever, sell the property, this tax fixing agreement will stay in, um, will stay in force regardless of who the owner of this is. That's correct. Okay. Um, and I also, I just um, was interested in um, the fact that the supply chain issues, um, has, has added a complication, I guess, in terms of um, uh, calculating um, tax, um, inter inter um, tax abatement issues um, for developers now. Um, and I'm just curious, won't, wouldn't some of that cost be passed on in terms of rents to the um, people who, who end up renting these apartments? I mean. I, 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 I'm sure that will happen. Um, you know, what, what this developer has worked on for the last, we'll say year in this project is uh, without the anticipation of the inflation that's been kicked in and the shortage of supplies. Uh, so, you know, they're looking at this project without the mar um, profit margin that they had anticipated in the first place. So um, the increase in the percentage that were, we negotiated coupled with whatever they do with their, their rent, uh, which we don't control, uh, should be able to provide the funding necessary for this project to be successful. And that's what we want it to be is successful. You know, I, I totally agree, but I just um, was concerned, not concerned, but, um, if we're building in all the um, the increase in costs into this tax abatement, um, I hope there won't be like a double hit in terms of people who are leasing the apartments as well. No, I I, I don't think that it, it really, Gail. It will all depend on what happens with this with this economy uh, for the future. You know, uh, what we encourage the developer to do and we do with all the developers right now is to get these projects underway because we don't know what the future holds. You know, uh, if things get a lot worse, it could be that some of these projects will, will not ever get developed and we don't want that to happen. So, um, you know, they can only estimate on, estimate on what their costs are going to be and, and so forth. So uh, that's not in 
our control nor is it in their control, but this is our best negotiated uh, plan that we both, the developer and the town uh, administration have found a, a mutual understanding and agreement with, and it's really in your bay. It, it's your call now what you, what do you want to do? Um, no, thank you for um, the, your work on this and um, the assessors and our assessor consultant. Um, it, it's, uh, will help move, you know, move this project forward. Thank you. As a note, Mr. Kosofsky's battery died, so he's left um, to be uh, uh, <laughs> Just so everybody understands, I noticed that Mr. Kosofsky dropped off the call. His battery died. He uh, communicated with James, so that's why he dropped off the call. Uh, Council Rada. Yeah, a couple of questions. Um, just to confirm, these will all be rental units, not um, condo units. So people okay. are renting. They'll all be rental units, yes. Okay. Um, and I know it's, it's a best guess, but um, we think that it will be possible that all these units will be filled. I'm, I'm just thinking of, of the abatement and then what is going to be going into our, our tax rolls in terms of new residents coming into the community and the impact that that may have. Will these be offset? It is my understanding based upon what has been uh, projected by the state of Connecticut and with the developer's own research and our own, our own knowledge and research that uh, these apartments will be, I believe, fully occupied as soon as they're ready. Uh, and one other question, and I, I remember this coming up um, as I sat as liaison to the TPZ. Um, I don't see any indication for sidewalks or walking space um, in this complex. Is that, is there a thought to provide this? There, there possibly would be in the future, but uh, Payne Road right now does not have uh, sidewalks uh, that lead anywhere. There may be certain portions of the, of the road that have uh, sidewalks that were installed over the years, but there's no direct link between, we'll say, the Berlin Turnpike and um, Church Street on the other end right now. So if sidewalks are be put in, it would, it would uh, involve uh, certainly a, a major investment by the town to have sidewalks that lead somewhere. Right now, they, if, if we just put them on this property, they wouldn't go anywhere. It's, it's almost an invitation for a problem when you have people that get on a sidewalk, they expect it to go somewhere. And then when they can't get any further, they, they end up in the road and we don't want that to happen. Okay, so thank you. Would be, would be something that may be looked by our town engineer down the road as a possible uh, improvement for all of Payne Road for having sidewalks on one or both sides all the way up. Okay, thank you. Yep. Councilor Camillo? You mentioned that there's going to be 150 units here? Uh, approximately 150, yes. Yeah. For the two bedrooms, two cars, so you'd have taxes. For the yeah, cars, the parking yeah. spaces were all approved by planning and zoning based upon the uh, units that uh, were being proposed, and the number of parking spaces were approved accordingly. Right. So you'd also have personal property for the company. You'd have the gyms and oh, the open. That's yeah. a whole nother. And then yeah. you've had the taxes for the people who live there for their cars too. Oh yes, yeah. That that's not well, something yeah. that we. Generally, so, so have figured in, but yes, the, right. the personal so you, motor vehicles uh, bring in right. a significant amount of revenue as well. And, and then you have you're at about four hundred thousand a year right now. What you're figuring, you need probably got another hundred thousand dollars in personal property and cars. I, I, yeah, I, I would say somewhere. Somewhere in that area, uh, Juana, you you're on. I see. Uh, you have any guesstimate? Yeah, I think what we had figured the last time this question came up, what we were thinking about six or eight hundred dollars per car. Right. Mm -hmm. Two cars. By 150 per, cars. 
Yeah. All right. Thank you. So this yeah, is so a, a yep, about a hundred grams. <laughs> this is a win for new. Okay. Any other council comment or question? Sure. Uh, yeah, Sharon. Mayor, what and everyone, will the school buses have access to be able to go in and drop people off and pick people up? in this configuration? I don't have an answer for you. I would, I would guess they're gonna pick them up at the, at the curb, uh, but I will check uh, on that and let, that, let you know of where the buses will be picking up and dropping off, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right, we don't have any other hands up, so we will move this to our next agenda for consideration. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all. Yep. All right, next up this evening is job description, assistant town manager, um, specification A12. We have in our packets this evening, um, <laughs> I like to refer to it as the old mimeograph version <laughs> yeah. um, that had been on file. <laughs> That's right, it should be purple and smelly um, from many years ago. And then we have a revised uh, draft document for our consideration. We'd be looking to take action on this at our next meeting. Um, so Mr. Chapman, do you wanna highlight anything about this for us? Uh, I will just say that this, uh, first of all, the, the way in which the job description is configured and, and designed uh, is matching the, the latest that we have in our operations. So the earlier version that you saw for a couple of seconds earlier was the old way probably done when I was town manager before back in the 90s. So we've, we've come a long ways, we'll say over a couple of years. Uh, but the job description um, has been reviewed by a number of uh, individuals uh, and determined to, to address what we anticipate the uh, position would entail uh, when it's filled. And it's, uh, it's at a it's salary grade that uh, is A12, which I can tell you what that range goes from, let me just look it up here real quick. Um, at this time, the salary range on A12 is 84,039 uh, to 153,218. Uh, you had budgeted, I believe, in your budget, something like 140 uh, when you proposed it. Um, so somewhere between the 84 and the 153, we will hopefully hire an assistant town manager that will be able to perform all these functions. And the job description is written in such a way where it, it's this, these descriptions as well as anything else that basically we want the assistant town manager to do. Okay, thank you. Council comment or question? All right, hearing none, we'll move this on to our next agenda for consideration. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Now we have we have an additional item that we added this evening, uh, the Anna Reynolds School Final Project Budget Acceptance. Um, we have before us a memo. Um, I understand the committee met uh, just last evening, right? Um, and reviewed the final budget. We've been provided with those numbers. We have Mayor Woods with us this evening, who's also the chairman of the Anna Reynolds uh, Project Building Committee. Would you like to come up? Good evening. Good evening. On this side of the aisle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <rub it> in. <laughs> Although you do a lot. I'm uh, by Tom DeMauro from Newfield Construction and Jennifer Manjali from Castle Booz. They're, okay. they're virtual. So Great. if there's any questions, um, they can address them as far as design goes, would be Jennifer, as far as uh, the budget, um, it would be Tom or myself. You were presented with the, uh, the GMP. Um, I believe you got it, hopefully you got it yesterday. As soon as we had it uh, finalized, we got it off to you. Again, I apologize. Um, I don't like to try to come to you last minute, um, but here we are last minute. You know, there was some snags uh, in keeping this project moving forward. We have worked them all out. Um, we had to rebid five of the pack, actually four of the packages and added one package because we had no interest in one. Um, 
that was very favorable when the bids came in uh, last Wednesday. Um, we are back on track. Um, and this passed uh, unanimously by the bills and committee um, yesterday afternoon to put it in front of you so that this body can then authorize the town manager to um, enter into contract. And again, the reason that we are in such a, a rush right now is that we're looking to hit summer construction schedule. Um, we would like to have the contractors, in, not every, every contractor, but all of the early starting contractors in place for June 6th start. Um, so that is obviously before you even meet again. Um, so it's critical for us to, to get all of our work done through the summer in phase one. Um, and I guess I will answer any questions if you have them. And if I can't, you know, Tom or Jennifer can. Okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor Draco. I'm just curious. Um, you know, we just heard about the um, department development being significantly hit by supply supply chain issues. Did that impact your budget revisions it, at all? It, it, it did impact it. Um, actually, that's another reason why it's critical that we get this move along and then we can enter into contracts. Once we enter into a contract with these firms, our, the prices are all set. So if this lasts another three, four, five weeks, and um, there are inflationary prices, they could get passed along um, or worse yet, a contractor could pull out. Um, but once we sign with the contractor, that's it. They're, this project is about a 27 month construction project. They're locked into those numbers. Again, somebody who lives it, um, I do it every day. So you're pretty confident about the bids? I, I am. Okay. We, they're not only, I think they are, they're, they're good bids, but they're solid contractors. I'm familiar with a lot of these contractors here. We have some really good contractors for this project. Um, and Newfield, again, who does this every single day. Um, it also is an agreement. The town, uh, to the best of my knowledge, has no objections to any of these because uh, Keith, the town manager, and the town needs to approve the list of contractors that you know will be willing to enter in. And this list is very similar to the first list we presented and Jeff Barron, uh, relayed to us that there was no issues with any of the contractors. Okay, thank you. Yep. Councilor Mankey? Yeah, thank you for your work on this. This, this, this can, I guess, be pretty tedious in a lot of numbers, so I appreciate you being able to keep on top of this in your committee. But <clears throat> if you want to start on the 6th, what, what's what's the plan to do this summer? What's what's work going to, what work is going to happen so this summer? The will be done. Some of the site work will be done. And it's really preparation for the major construction of the wings in the second summer. Second summer. So this yeah. is just, just kind of prep work that's going to happen this summer. But, but there's a lot, and it, yeah. it's obviously key to get it done so we can finish it in the second summer. And just for, for my education, mm -hmm. guaranteed maximum price means once we sign the contract, they have to do the work for that price. That's correct. Even if the costs go up, their costs go up. What if they find something that they hadn't uh, anticipated? So if there if there is something like unforeseen conditions, yeah, like so the hall, they found that the oil tank was buried, and, and so it's unforeseen. Yeah. So there is there is an owner's contingency. There is a CM contingency and also built into the different disciplines here for all these contractors, there's allowances that the CM controls. Um, and that figure for this project is somewhere right around $450,000. So you just take so, it out of that fund. This, yeah. So okay. there's, there is more than enough funds to cover any unforeseen conditions. You know, on yeah. Well, again, <laughs> I, I, I've been talking to a lot of people over the last few days um, and you know, we're not building a new building, right? So there's not a lot that can happen when we when we go in the ground because we're not going in the ground, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. We're adding, uh, I think it's a 10 by 10 or 12 by 10 elevator pit. That's the only addition to the building. The rest is basically taking off the skirt, putting on a new one. Okay. I, I, will we find some stuff? Yes. Yeah, you know? I mean, that, that happens probably all the time that, that you don't anticipate something. And that's why those contingencies are built in there to cover those. I mean, it's, it's a big project for the town of New England. I think it's the largest project that the town has ever put forward. Um, and and I, I can respect that. Um, and uh, I, I am, you know, I, I enjoy doing this. Uh, I, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I, I am crazy, but I do. Um, you know, we're, it's up to us to make sure this town is in a better place right. when we leave it. Um, and I, Amen. That didn't sink in until I was almost 40 years old. 
but then it sank in pretty pretty deep. Um, and I'm committed to this town. Is the project because we're trying to meet these timelines? As you, and I spoke with you about this privately, but um, the this agenda item was added last minute, so this wasn't a published agenda item. So the public wouldn't have had advance notice to know if they had anything <clears> to <throat> offer um, or add to this discussion to come this evening. So in terms of keeping to the timeline, it, I would rather not waive rules this evening to accomplish that. And so I had sent out to the um, majority and minority leader a uh, suggestion to add a special meeting um, for the town council on Thursday evening of this week at 6 p.m. Yeah, we're all set. Yep. Um, and I believe everybody's all set yep. for that. And that would meet your timeline. You know, delighted with that. Um, also, too, so the rest of the council knows, I know I shared it with you, Mayor, um, that our meetings are obviously open to the public. Mm -hmm. um, there's been very little um, input, negative or positive. I, I, to be honest with you, I think most people just assume that it's happening. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then, so they're just waiting to see the construction. Um, there's, I, I don't know that we've had a negative comment. At well, all. and they put our trust yeah. in us to do the best for the town because they that's why we're here and that's why you're there. Right. Councillor Page. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, mm -hmm. I know you've worked closely with uh, our town manager and many folks to keep this as um, responsible financially and under budget as possible. Can you speak to the last three to five significant cuts you've made? What has had to be, uh, what's been cut from the last proposal to make this more feasible financially? So most of it is just finishes except for the courtyard. There was a pretty elaborate courtyard um, that appeared all through um, our budgeting and um, construction, uh, excuse me, leading up pre-construction phase that it was going to be affordable. It would be the time to do it when you have the building ripped apart. Right? Um, so we, uh, at least I knew, and I think most of the members of the committee actually, um, Mike Camillo and, and, and Kim Rada, now the two counselors sit on the, on the, committee with me knew, well, although Mike is relatively uh, not new, or Mike's got now two and a half years on the committee, but Kim is, is brand new. Um, they, that courtyard was a kind of a holding place yep. and it, it went because of inflation. Um, so, you know, some of the stuff is just a little bit crazy right now. Um, so we knew that we would probably have to give it up, didn't want to, but that's it. The, some of the other things, uh, uh, roofing. Um, and roofing is a key uh, topic at, on this particular school. <laughs> so the new the new roofing, and to be honest with you, I'm not keen on it, but it's PVC. Everybody wants PVC, and it, but it's really pricey. But they told us there's not that much difference between that roofing and the roofing that we were with that we would maybe wanted to go. So we're going to stick with the PVC roofing. Well, there was a significant difference. And some, just to give you a small example, there was a four foot fence, four foot fence. In the last 10 years, you could buy for 15 to $20 a linear foot. It's now 75, 80 to as much as $100. So some of the stuff is just crazy. And like the fence didn't have to be there. It was, we were going to put it there because it would keep the balls from, you know, going into the woods. It's not the end of the world that the balls go into the woods. Right. So, right. Um, and, and the fence, it, it wasn't securing anything. You know, so it didn't no, have, it didn't lock. Like, yeah, we weren't fencing in anyone. Correct. Yeah. So uh, we had all operable windows in there. And I think the only reason we did that, to be honest with you, was because of COVID. Mm -hmm. But this building now is going to be fully air conditioned. Um, it was extremely expensive to have all operable windows. So we cut that back to there's two operable windows in each classroom and a operable window in any of the other um, supplement rooms throughout the building. So those are the kind of things. And it, it's a long list, um, but no safety items um, were given to. They were discussed, but we didn't we didn't, we didn't didn't uh, do any of those, to cut any of that. And I, and I ask because I, I think all of us appreciate the hard work you always do on this. And, and Mr. Camillo, Councilman Camillo and Rada and everybody serving to make sure that we cut uh, what we can to make it affordable, but still safe in a pleasant environment for learning. So um, I just wanted to hear that and have all of us hear that because it's been a lot of work and some tough decisions. I appreciate it very much. Yeah, I mean, I think when we're all said and done, Councilor, um, the town will have a building that will be very proud of and it'll, you know, it's going to outlast me, that's for sure. Councilor <laughs> <laughs> Donahue? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. You're good? I'm good. Okay. Deputy Mayor Bedraco? 
And one question I just forgot. Um, I thought in the beginning it was said that there wasn't going to be any relocation of students, but now I, I just heard um, Lou Giacomo would say that the preschool was coming yes, to be. Yes, that's my knowledge. That was always the plan. We knew that we would relocate the preschool. Okay. Okay. So what the you know the, the students K through four are staying in the building. It's just a preschool. Councilor Rada. Um, I think Steve, you spoke to this in one way or another, but I remember the conversation that we had at the last meeting where we were talking about owner contingency and wanting to keep that percentage as, as high as we could. Um, and some of the discussion we had, including the, the facade um, and the panels so that I don't know if you wanted to speak any more about that, just to kind of allay anybody's concerns or questions that they may have in terms of, I mean, people are always concerned about going over budget and how close are we to budget and, and what's going to be happening, especially when we're hearing now about supply chain issues. Um, but these have been discussions we've had all along. Yeah, so we have an owner's contingency right now at the point of 3.3% of construction. Um, it should be, which is about a million two. It's a million one hundred and so, let me find it, give you the exact figure. One million one hundred and seventy-nine thousand. So just under one million two. It should be one million four hundred and fifty-six. That's that's it. And that's the highest you can be. The state will not allow you to carry any more than five percent. Um, again, because this is there's not a lot of unknowns here. Um, again, we're not we're not yeah, putting in new Hope foundations. So we know there's rock there, but we're not going to go into the rock because we're not putting any new foundations in. Um, we have a really good handle on the abatement. Um, a lot of the school has already been abated. Lou Giacomo has taken a lot of the asbestos out. Um, there are some P, uh, PCBs uh, in the paint um, that will come out. But again, we're aware of all this stuff. <clears throat> are we going to find some things because of the um, renovations that were done in the 80s? If you remember um, back in the 80s, those buildings were nothing but glass. Yeah. Um, you know, and we're all kind of coming back to that. So we took all the glass out, closed all in. So is there going to be, you know, maybe a little bit of asbestos encapsulated? Yes, there is. Um, but again, we think we have a really good handle on what that amount is going to be. So um, I, I am I am comfortable. Um, and if I wasn't, I actually I had a couple of conversations with the mayor. I would told her I would give her a call as well as the town manager and said, look, we did the best we could and we, we can't mm -hmm. make it happen. I believe we can. And I discussed the idea of does it have to go back out to referendum if we can't get there, right? Um, and Mayor Wood expressed his sincere beliefs that we are good to go. So, um, so I, I appreciate that. Uh, Councilor Mankey, you're next. And just quickly, just I know it's a short notice, but it, it was possible to come up with a, a, a list of what what was taken out of the project to get to this to this number. Yeah. Other than the, the finish, you know, what the finishes were and what the, the courtyard was. Tom or Jennifer, um, do you want I mean, do you want to actually get the list? We can, I can either send you the list or I can have them kind of just walk through it quickly. Or we can do it next our, our meeting on Thursday. I know it's I know it's only a two day it's a two day turnaround to get it, and I appreciate your your efforts. The list we have the list yeah, already. Okay. You know, yeah. so maybe you can forward it out to maybe, all of us. Okay. Just start yeah. with you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then we can discuss it on Thursday. So you, I, my, my fear is that we're going to get this whole thing done, and someone's going to come back and say, "Oh, we didn't do the courtyard. We should in the courtyard," and, and I want some way to say, look, we didn't do it because here was the cost and here was the the, the, the price, the, the final, the, the cap. And, you know, you get a courtyard, but you have to, what else are you going to give up? You know, so to me, giving up a courtyard makes sense as opposed to giving up. So the new courtyard has been given up, but yet there will still be new walks in there. Yeah. Because, still, right. And then the equipment that's in there, we had always intended on leaving. That equipment is still staying. Okay. So it's it's not like it's going to be just, just a, a bearing steel, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there okay. will be some stuff in there. Yeah. It just won't be new stuff. Uh, and again, if I, I'm, I'm in this business again, so the uh, the the price on play equipment is insane. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I mm -hmm. it's and actually if we're doing one right now in um, Danbury. Typically, a wait for play on equipment is 30 days. It is now 26 weeks. Wow. <laughs> As the play equipment from the okay. date of order. Wow. Sorry, it's part of that cost. The cushiony safe padding on the ground that you put in, you mean? Originally, that it was. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there is some in there now. Right. And that will stay. That's got to be expensive. But if we can get a list, that would be that would be. Yeah. be, 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 be good. Thank you. 
Councillor Nagel. Uh, some details. Uh, you mentioned earlier about less operable windows. Having worked in a variety of schools myself when I taught, the type of operable windows is very important for a variety of reasons, especially because of the age of the children. What kind of operable windows are now being proposed? Jennifer, can you help oh, me with that? Oh, sure. <laughs> um, there are single hung operable windows. Um, they are aluminum storefront systems. Um, you know, we wouldn't do a, a because of the uh, school and uh, the lifespan that we really want want you to have some good warranties for a while. Um, we tend to lean toward aluminum uh, storefront systems, aluminum windows, rather than something like vinyl or, you know, otherwise. So they are single hung. Are they crank windows or are they slide windows or, or are they going to be towards the, the top as opposed to the, the bottom? Are they full length? So uh, if I heard Jennifer correctly, they're, they're, um, Single hung windows, so just right. the bottom of the window will be able to slide up. Okay, the top I didn't is understand fixed. that that meant okay. that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, I have Two windows in each classroom, yeah, opposite ends. Okay. So. And also, I wanted to know about the uh, exits as they stand now. Uh, have have there been changes to it? Are they were they once of a better grade or or more? Uh, Um, uh, yeah, yeah, safety in terms of people getting in or getting out, since that seems to be very important in schools today. Yeah, uh, again, what, what we haven't done and, and we still don't want to do, we can do this privately. But I, we can't talk publicly about the security measures that we're putting into the building, um, but there are, and I, I'd be glad to have that conversation with you off camera. Okay. Okay. That was a question posed at the committee, I know. So I know you, I know you all are... Considering it, yeah. Councilor Donahue. Yeah, just just real quick. I mean, I don't, I you know the online is alive with what's being cut and everything. I and I I trust you that we're not just going to see you know lipstick and paint put on this building. It's going to be what the parents have expected. I don't think we've ever seen a drawing totally of what the concept was. You know, finished rendering or whatever. So is there something that is available now to finish rendering of the building and some of the interior spaces that we can look at? I, I don't want to have, you know, 400 pages of architecture. I can, we can, I can have that for us Thursday. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Um, any other council <clears throat> comment or question? James, I have a question for you. Can you forward out the referendum language to us just so we can do that while we're looking at everything as well? Thank you. I did try to surf it up in my email and couldn't find it. My computer is on the fritz. I have a loaner, so I appreciate you sending that out. I don't see any other questions, so thank you, Mr. Yeah, thank Woods. you. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? You can raise your hands. And, and I like that. <laughs> yeah. It's of like, easier with so, this yeah, configuration yeah. than doing yeah, this number. Because so. the configuration doesn't work well for that. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. That doesn't like work that. well at all. You yeah. can send happy faces and frowny faces, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to tell you what Mitch yeah, sends me. <laughs> The laptops, we had the little iPads. The iPads, that's right. That's right. Yep. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay. Six o'clock, we're going to start a little bit earlier. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, folks, that concludes our new business. We're on to written and oral communications from the town manager, Mr. Chapman. Yes, a couple of things. Um, I have Steve Clark with me, uh, Chief of Police. Uh, because the question came up at the last meeting about the status of the staffing levels at the police department. And I talked with Steve today and uh, we decided that it'd be better if he answered your question. So give you a brief overview uh, of, of what's been accomplished over the last months and several years. But if there's any questions following them, uh, we'll get it all cleared tonight. So Steve, I'm gonna turn it right over to you. So, uh, the quick overview. So right now the department authorized strength we're supposed to be at 52. And as we stand right now, we are six officers short uh, with a anticipation of a, a veteran officer retiring in the next several weeks. So that will bring us to seven officers being short. 
So since January of, of 2022, we've lost a, a lieutenant, three sergeants, and four police officers all due to retirement. We had a uh, probationary officer that was separated from service due to performance issue. Uh, we had an officer leave due to a, a physical disability. And then we had another officer resign to join another police department that had a better pension, which was a 20 year pension. Um, so what we do is we look for, there's, there's two types of officers that, that we test for. We have what we call entry level. Those are uh, candidates that have no previous police experience. They're, they're not certified officers in Connecticut. They have no certification uh, in another state. So since um, January of 2021, we have tested 377 entry-level applicants. And out of that 377 applicants, we've hired only two. Uh, and the two that we hired, one is down at the police academy now, is scheduled to graduate, I believe, the second week of July. And we just hired another officer who's scheduled to attend the police academy on June 3rd. So just out of those 377 applicants, we've hired only two. Um, so again, since January, we've, hired, we've had 58 certified officers apply. So those are officers that are currently already certified in Connecticut, have gone to the, the Connecticut Police Academy or another state academy where their certification is accepted in Connecticut. So out of those 58 applicants that are currently already police officers, we've hired only five. So I, I think it gives you a good indication of our hiring standards. Uh, we're looking for a specific officer. So when you consider the fact there's 58 officers that are already certified and out of those 58, we only hired five. It's, it's pretty uh, telling of what we're looking for. Okay. Counselors, questions, comments? How are you feeling, uh, Chief, in terms of the um, your ability to meet, you know, the expectations that you need for each shift? Are you being able to cover things adequately right now, the way you're staffed? Basically, what we're at the patrol is fine. We're we're basically putting patrol is the most important division in the police department. Um, you know, that's where people expect when they dial nine one one that they have a police officer at their front door within uh, two and a half to three minutes. And that's basically, if you dial 911 and there's something serious going on at your home, you're gonna have an officer standing at your front door rather quickly. It's all the extras that are gonna begin to suffer. It's the community outreach programs. It's the detective division that are required to follow up on people's um, burglaries, serious crimes, things of that nature. So when we're down as many as we are, we really have to focus on patrol because that's where the majority of the calls for service are going to be. And, uh, the other issue that we're having now is supervision. You know, with the lieutenant having retired, uh, the three sergeants that are retired were down four supervisors. We kind of bridged the gap with. Uh, the deputy chief that we hired temporarily to get us through that time. Um, we're expected to make a promotion probably within the next four to five weeks. The two certified officers that we recently hired, one from Hartford, one from East Hartford, have about another four weeks to go on their field training. So once they're finished, we're going to make a promotion which will be good because we need that extra supervisor on the evening shift. That's our busiest shift. Right now we have only one supervisor on that shift. It's really too much for that supervisor to handle. So it's important to make that promotion as quick as possible so we can add that second supervisor on evenings. But again, that still leaves us a Lieutenant short. We're short, we don't have a Sergeant in the detective division. We don't have an administrative sergeant uh, in admin. 
And, you know, with all the mandates that are coming, we're trying to go up with the body worn cameras that we're having issues with, with supply chain, um, the new public act and the police accountability. We cut requires us to be accredited um, by 2025. So we're going to need an accreditation manager, somebody to, to monitor that and make sure that the, the standards are being met. So there's a whole lot of work that needs to be done um, behind the scenes in the administrative division. And right now we just don't have the folks to be able to handle that. So we're doing the best we can um, to hire people. But just to give you a, a comparison, when I took the test back in 1985, there were 500 people that took the written test and there were just three openings in the department at the time. So there's 500 going for three openings. Um, I got hired, two others got hired, but currently the last test that we've given, there have only been 30 applicants. So mm -hmm. we've gone from 500 to 30. That's how bad it's gotten. Yeah. It is, it's, we're in a very difficult situation. I have a couple of friends of mine that teach in college. They teach criminal justice. Years ago, their classes were completely full. Uh, 30, 35 people in their classes. They're now down to nine or 10 in each class. And if you ask these people if they want to be police officers, the majority want to get into some type of uh, police probation, things of that, that nature, not actually being a police officer. And this is not unique to Newington. If you go and survey a lot of the other chiefs throughout the Connecticut or even across the country, they're going to tell you that their biggest challenge right now is finding qualified people because it's just not there. The working conditions um, are, are terrible. Um, they, they just are, especially after what happened with George Floyd. Uh, some of you were up at the center when they had the demonstration up at the center and the signs, the things that were being said. And, you know, I, I remember looking around, looking at the younger officers that really didn't have those experiences uh, in, in, I don't want to say a hostile crowd, but a large crowd. In some of the things that were being said, it there's a reason why there's folks not getting into the uh, profession. The police accountability bill, um, what's said in the media, even worse, what's said mm -hmm. by some of our elected officials. I mean, I've heard some of the debates up at the state capitol by some of our elected officials and some of the things that they say. I mean, that resonates and uh, that makes a big difference. And we're seeing the results of that. And if things don't change, it, it, it's going to be very, very difficult. And we're going to have to make some, some difficult decisions on the services that were being provided. Or, I mean, I, I, my opinion, I, if the trend keeps continuing, I, I really believe that we're going to have to move to a Harford County police, a Metropolitan police, because we're... we're nobody's getting into the field and we're going to have to consolidate and share our resources in order to provide law enforcement services. And I can tell you if that happens, where the resources are going to go, they're going to go to where the need is most. And that's going to be into the inner cities and the suburbs are going to be left with the scraps. So that's my opinion. Um, you know, I, I, if, as people leave, we're not able to fill those vacancies. And if, and if we can't turn it around, we're, we're gonna have to make some tough decisions. And we can't lower our standards. Right. I, I don't know how some of these larger agencies are higher in 20, 30, 40 out of clip. I can't find one. I, I just, and we have a very competitive contract. Um, you know, we, our, our officers are paid well. There's a tremendous amount of community support here. Um, you know, if, if personally, if, if I was starting, I this is one of the first places I'd be looking because of the, the pay, the support that the community provides, that the town council provides, the town manager, the mayor. You, you couldn't ask for a, a better situation. And we're struggling. We are really struggling. So 
Uh, we're doing the best we can, and uh, but um, we're in the process now of, of doing a, uh, a test. We sent the number to um, to background, and we've had a couple people fail the polygraph. Mm. So I mean, that's the situation that we find ourselves in right now. Chief, my first question or thought is, you know, we've done the sign on bonus. And as you mentioned, you have a lot of support sitting at this table. And I'm glad to hear that you know that. Um, but what else can we do? Is there anything else we can do? And if the, if you don't think of it tonight, but think of it, at what, you know, after tonight, you have just please let us know as a council, whatever we can do to support you in hiring and attracting, um, you know, we recognize that need. We're here to do that. No, absolutely. If, if anything comes up, I, I'll certainly let you know um, through, through the town manager. Um, we've hired three officers that were paid the, the $5,000 $5, sign-on bonus. Um, I talked to the town manager. We are now providing a $2,500 bonus to any of our officers that reach out and are able to get an officer to come yeah. to the department to pay them. Because they're actually, to be honest with you, the officers are the best recruiters. They, they mm -hmm. really are. They're, they are the best recruiters. They know who they want to work with. They know who the other officers are out there, uh, people that would fit into the organization and be uh, a good teammate. Um, so they are really our, our, our best recruiters. So hopefully offering that uh, to them will maybe bring in some more applicants we're doing the best we can. We have that public safety day coming up in a couple of weeks. We'll be out there meeting right. and greeting and trying to uh, entice uh, folks into the profession. But there's just, you know, officers have been vilified. It, 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 yep. It's having, it, it is having effect. And I'm not going to sit here and say some terrible things haven't been done. They absolutely have. And, and I cringe when I see it. But it's it's not that the vast majority of the officers that go out there will give their life for a stranger. And that's, that's not right. a superficial statement. I've been around for a long time. I've seen a lot of officers put it on the line out there for people every day. And, and that's what they're willing to do. And unfortunately, some of those bad incidents um overshadow the good that goes on each and every day and I'll, I'll give you an example you know after the demonstrations up in the center i got an email i got quite a few emails some were good some were very hateful um and i kept them all um and there was one where uh, a young woman emailed me and she wanted to know what i was doing to protect her and her family from the police not from the bad guys, but from the police. So she sees the police as the greatest adversary against her personal safety. Not the people that are out there that are, you know, committing robberies, murder, uh, breaking into cars, stealing cars, doing robberies. That she's not worried about them. She's worried about the people that have been sworn to protect. And to be quite honest with you. She, She's not the only one. There's there's others out there, and there's a few other emails that I've received that um, depict the same thing. So that's what we're dealing with, and and people just don't want to. They they just don't want the the challenges that come with being a police officer. Just think of yourself. We have the body cams, in car cameras. I mean, just think where, where you work now. So everything that you do at work, if you had a body camera on your person recording everything you do at work. Is that something you'd be willing to do? Right. And I'll, th those are the conditions that the officers are working under. And some of them handle it very well, um, but there's people that just don't wanna get into that type of scrutiny. Uh, yep. And that's where yep. we're at. Okay. Uh, Councilor Page, your hand is up. Did you have a question? Thanks, yeah, thanks, Chief, very much for all of this. And um, just you've addressed it a bit. And I didn't know if you can say any more about uh, not necessarily the dollar amount, but are we doing enough as a town salary wise to be competitive? And do we need to revisit that? Salary wise, we are extremely competitive. We are one of the higher paid. Okay. Uh, are, are there some departments out there that that 
pay more than us? Yes, there is. I, I can think of one right off the bat right now. Um, but we are extremely competitive. And if you talk to some of the certified officers that came over from other departments, they received a huge pay increase because they weren't that well paid and they came here for the pay. Okay, thank you. But it, you know what, to, to your, it's, it's not just the pay. Right. Oh, I get you know, it. It's, yeah. it's, it's the working it's, conditions. It's, 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 it's the job. It's people don't yeah. want to take on everything that comes with being a police officer. I mean, you get involved in a deadly force situation, you're, you're faced with three investigations, two for sure. You're gonna be investigated by the, your own department. You're gonna be investigated by the inspector general's office. And if there's any evidence of, of a civil rights violation, you're gonna get investigated by the US Department of Justice. Mm -hmm. you're, you're facing three investigations. I mean, that's yeah. a lot to endure and it's a lot for your family to endure. I mean, we yes. talk about the officers, but the families too bear a lot of that burden. Yeah. So that's where we're at. Very valid. Deputy Mayor Bedrago? Um, yeah, I was about to comment. I said, I mean, the, the money I don't think is the issue. I mean, it's, it's the it's the relationships and the fact that you know, you're in a profession, you've got a, a, a uniform on and um, the continual scrutiny. I never even thought about constantly having a, you know, have a camera on you or a the uh, body cam, whatever. Um, the lack of, you know, lack of respect, lack of support. Um, you're guilty until proven innocent. I mean, it's, it's an incredibly stressful position and just something's got to change. But I do have just a two comments or one question. I mean, I think certainly I was actually appalled last week about the mugging at 8.30 on Main Street, Newington. I mean, we're certainly changing as a community. If I can just interject with that real quickly. Oh. That yeah, was, go ahead. That was false. It was false. It was false. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't comment any further, but I was... Okay. Um, yeah, that didn't happen. Right. Well, that's 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 oh, that makes me feel much better um, about the community in general and any changes that are happening. Um, I'm just your uh, professional opinion. Um, there's been a lot of hoopla and fanfare about, uh, and one of the big problems in Newington has been the catalytic converters. And at the state level, it's everybody's celebrating. Oh, you know, we we passed legislation and to solve this catalytic converter converter issue, whatever. In your opinion, is it going to make a difference? It, it, it will help, but it, what's going to happen is those dealers are going to go underground. They're, they're, yeah. they're what's going to happen? And you know what? Here, here's the big thing for, for me: the criminal justice system, the court systems are seriously understaffed. Mm -hmm. They're they're not prosecuting cases. We're getting mm -hmm. warrants kicked back. There's, there's, there's not a lot of follow-up on the other end. I was watching the Criminal Justice Commission interview uh, candidates for the new chief state's attorney, and they were talking about how Harford was like 35%, uh, a reduction in, in court staff, 35% at, at the Harford Superior Court. I mean, that's huge, 35%. So cases are gonna be slipped through the cracks. Cases aren't going to be followed up. And, and I think that's what we're seeing. We're putting all this emphasis now into these new laws to uh, keep people in check. And then when you arrest them and you send them to court, nothing's happening. Right. right. So what, what, what's the point of making all these investments if you're not getting any, any return on it at the other end? Yep. So until the state steps up and starts getting more judges, getting more prosecutors to handle these cases and start holding people accountable or putting them in a system where they need services or get services. It's, it's, you're just spinning your wheels. And you know all these, this grant money, these task forces, they're all great. But when you make an arrest and that person goes to court and nothing happens, what, what's the point? 
It, it's just right. my personal opinion is until the courts step up with their staffing and having judges, prosecutors, and start dealing with these issues, nothing's going to change. It's not going to change. Thank you. Um, just one more. Um, I don't know. This probably is a stupid idea or a stupid thought, but um, I know every time, no matter what the issue is, uh, the first thing people call the police. Did you call the police? Did you tell the police? Whether it's a dog barking, whether it's um, smoke going over, you know, somebody's fence, whether it's um, th there's an awful lot of I think nuisance calls, which again, probably by you going out there, you know, you perhaps establish a relationship or, you know, perhaps, you know, make your presence known. But some of these like ridic not ridiculous, I don't mean ridiculous because at the time it is not ridiculous, but um, it, they're not annoyance not calls, yeah. right. um, these nuisance calls that are not life and death, are not critical and probably could be handled, don't have to be an at that moment basis. Is there a way that some of these like non-certified or people could be hired or, or is there some kind of like a lower level that can be used to handle some of these nuisance calls? I mean, you might be able to create like a community services, uh, a non-sworn position, but then you'd have to get bargain with the union, um, yeah. things like that. So it, it brings a whole, set of issues into place but i can tell you you know people in newington have a a certain level of expectation when it comes to service and when they call the police or dial 911 they want a cop at their house and you know chances are if it's an issue they may not want to talk to that person you know not years ago when people had a complaint against an officer they would call the sergeant and the sergeant would handle it over the phone. Now they don't want to talk to the sergeant, nor do they want to talk to the sergeant. They don't want to talk to the lieutenant. So what they want to do, they all call me. Mm. They want yeah. to go right to the top. And that's just the culture that we have now. Thank you. Well, thank you and uh, bless you and your staff. Amen. Council Rada? Nebraska. Yes. Um, what I'm what I'm hearing and, and what also concerns me is the level of stress and issue morale issues that, that you and the department are facing and, and how are you dealing with that? You know you, it, you, you personally or or the you as you. collectively <laughs> as the department. I'll be honest with you. I'm fine. This, yeah. this, not a lot that good, to, me. good to know. It, it, good to know. Anybody will tell you that, that there's not a lot that bothers me. Um, I mean, the officers, I mean, we have wellness. That's the big thing now is, is officer wellness. We have a peer support team in, within the department. We have EAP. Um, part of their certification now, they have to be, um, go through a psychological screening. So there's there's systems in place, uh, something that we have to watch. Um, it's a lot different um, now than it was when I started. When I started, you, you were left to your own devices. Now there's a lot of systems in place to help officers cope with that stress. But unfortunately, it's the stress of the job, but it's also the stress that's put on the officers by some of the rhetoric that comes from some of our elected officials and it's not you and some of the things that the media says and some of the things that the public says so they're being faced with a lot and they're being faced with a lot of things that i didn't have to deal with when i first started out and i have nothing but respect for the people that come into this profession because number one there's not a lot of people that want to do it so just the fact that you want to step up and do that, I have nothing but respect for those individuals that are entering a profession that is so much more difficult now than it was when I started, you know, 30 something years ago. Thank you. Councilor Nagel. Uh, thank you. Uh, Chief, could you um, tell me in the light of what's been happening uh, 
recently and periodically happens and gets in the news nationwide uh, involving uh, safety of children uh, without getting into the weeds and specifics about headlines recently. What can you say or what is the department doing to try to reassure uh, parents as well as the community about the safety of our children uh, in Newington? And uh, what advice can you give uh, uh, those parents and others that can help you in terms of keeping uh, the young people in, uh, in town safe? I know that kind of leads into an event that uh, in part that you have coming up. So that gives you an opportunity to talk about that too. Yeah, I mean, as far as kids, I mean, we have a youth officer. We work very closely with um, the Board of Ed, the schools. Uh, Lieutenant Morgan, who recently retired from the police department, is now the director of security. Um, you know, the security in the schools, in my opinion, is, 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 is excellent. And, uh, you know, I had two daughters that went through the school system, and if they were young, you know, in elementary school now, I would feel perfectly safe with them being in the school system. Just uh, the collaboration that we have with the with the schools when it comes to security. Um, so yeah, I, I I think it's 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 really really good, and I I, I wouldn't have any um, reservations about you know, my children or grandchildren being in the uh, the school district. Um, you know, as far as outside the schools. Um, you know, we try to, you know, work with parents, we work with human services um, to, you know, get as much information as we can, especially if there's any threats and get that out there. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, we, we do the best we can uh, with the circumstances that we're faced with. Okay, thank you. All right, I don't see any other Counselor, hands up. So I think we're all set. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you too. Mr. Chapman, did you have anything else under your report? Yeah, just a couple of things, if I may. <laughs> um, we, you know, we've talked at times about enhancing some of our systems that we have in place. And, and I just want to report that this spring, we paved, Milden paved about five and a half miles of road. Nice. After July 1st, we will pave about <laughs> six, six, almost seven miles of road. Now, keep in mind that in the past, a good year would result in about three and a half miles of road being paved. We oh, have more than doubled that now on an annual basis. And it will reflect well on the town. Most of the roads that have deficiencies, potholes and so forth are gonna be corrected in a very short order. But it's an example where the reorganizations that we're doing in the town and the focuses that we are now promoting are working extremely well. And I think going back to what the chief just talked about, the problems that he's facing and we're facing with the police department are not coming. We lost you. I have to deal with that stuff. So uh, the other thing I just want to bring up is that I did resign effective uh, June 22nd or June 20th of this year. I then rescinded that resignation uh, and the reasoning behind it was um, my health and um, I, I was under some deadlines that I had to make a decision. However, everything that was occurring has been corrected and therefore I intend to stay on as long as you folks want me to be your town manager. That should correct any questions that anybody has. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Could I ask a question? Super good news. Yes. No, oh, make sure I have a question. <laughs> Is it? I would say three. If Carol sat in my chair, I should get a couple. Oh, okay. Um, Keith, it, with your rescission of your resignation, does that include you moving uh, to Newington or establishing residency? He's frozen. Well, I have until June 22nd to decide that. And right. if I need to have established residency, I will. 
Well, it isn't up to me, it's up to our town charter. And I took an oath on November 9th to uphold our town charter. And I was hoping we wouldn't have to have this conversation, but um, the charter is our constitution. Um, and you, you have should have been given an extension when we had the hellfire of COVID. Um, I think that was the right thing. And I would have voted for that extension, but we're now a year past that extension and in violation of our charter. And, whether it's you or anybody sitting in that chair, I'm accountable to the voters. I took an oath, I raised my right hand and swore, not just to James, but actually to God, although sometimes I get confused. Um, and um, so the language of the charter is clear and we all sitting at this table are in violation of it. And this isn't about you, this is about me and my promise to the voters and about all the council councilors and the mayor. So I would ask that you comply with the charter and that we don't have to go to a vote moving forward and and go from there well, I, I, believe, I, I believe he, I yeah do. i believe mr chapman just said he would do what he needed to do come june 22nd so that'll be great so we don't have to move forward with that okay. yep. well he said that before too and it hasn't happened we never said that a year past the charter requirement we gave an well, extension will, but, but, uh, you gave him an extension which is a right, violation which, which, of the charter which, which let is, me just say okay Okay, let me just say a couple of things. So it's coming from me and no one else. Nobody has to defend my actions. Mm -hmm. I was given the extension because it was declared a state of emergency in the town of Newington because of COVID. That state of emergency continues today. COVID is back on the rise again. I may request as early as two weeks from now that I receive an extension because of COVID again. Now, if if the council feels that my residency over overshadows the work that we're getting accomplished, then that's your call. I'm not going to debate it with you. If you're my bosses. You want me out of here? Vote me out. I don't, I, you know, it's no sweat off me. But know what you're doing when it comes to operating this town efficiently and show me a town manager in the history of this town that has done better work than me. You decide. Mr. Ch Mr. Chapman, we know what the expectation is and we know the deadline of that expectation is June 20th or 22nd. I'd have to look at the contract. Yep. Um, and you have indicated uh, in conversations with me that you intend to comply with the expectation of the charter. You indicated that earlier in the conversation. Um, I would expect that that's what this council Appreciate. expects. That's what's on the table. And um, I think that's kind of enough said at this point. Mr. Yeah. Page, you made your point pretty clear. Um, and the town manager has said that he will comply come the time that he needs to. I would like to add one more thing. I just would like to respond to Keith. This isn't about my feelings. And this isn't about a state of emergency. We have a legal document called a charter. And there's a case in New Haven recently that was that was decided by a court about a police chief who was in violation of their charter and the court fired the police chief, not the council, the court. I'm afraid that someone in our community will file a lawsuit against our town for being out of compliance with the charter. This isn't about our feelings or whether you're a great guy or not, or doing a wonderful job or not. It's about a legal document called our town charter, which we all swore to on November 9th and I'm done. Thank you. Yeah, we're all very aware, thank you. Well, you haven't acted like it for the last year because you've been by this. We have. I think if, you know, if we stop hammering on the issue continuously, it will resolve itself. This is the first time I brought this up since I've been in office. The first time. Right. I haven't we, we, hammered anything. And I feel passionate about our charter. And, and I, I wish feel, you all did too. And I feel passionate. Well, that's, that's ridiculous. Of course, I agree. All right, it's order, okay. order. Guys, enough. First of all, I will address this. Mr. Page, I, I understand your opinion. You've made it very clear. To insult the rest of the council, to insinuate that we don't take the charter seriously is ridiculously that's a insulting. Fact you're not following. That's a fact. You can be insulted if you like, but that's a fact. You can have your opinion. We it's did take opinion, an action. We got fact. an attorney's opinion and we moved forward as a council during a state of emergency to it's the best fact. of our ability and handle the situation that we thought was relevant. You can disagree with that, but you can't insult me. I'm not that's just not. There. I'm not disagreeing. The charter is. I didn't write the that's charter. That's fine. I live under the charter, as do you. You are correct. I do live under the charter. So let's do that. You are correct. Standing. You do this every meeting. Yeah. And we have already made it clear what the expectation is. Council, We're gonna move on. I'm following the charter, and I ask that you do the same thing. Order. 
I'm not Excuse me, this is not how we conduct the meeting. We yeah. do not argue between counselors. That yeah. is not it. I am in charge of this meeting. I will call on you as I see fit. That's how this meeting is run. Thank you. Thank you. Written and oral communications from the town manager is completed. We will continue on with our agenda. There is no way I will entertain at this table slanderous comments and arguments back and forth between counselors. I won't do it. All right, next item is council liaison and committee reports. Oh, uh, yeah, Deputy Mayor Vidrico. Okay, uh, first of all, Councilor um, Rada and I have, <laughs> have been attending our um, the TPC know? meetings. And just to let, um, I think the most interesting thing is coming up tomorrow, there's two public hearings that people might be interested in. The first is um, accessory apartments um, and to um, either opt out of the state regulations and create our own or revise our own. And um, the second is a special permit to allow hybrid retail location for adult use cannabis at um, the Berlin Turnpike, the old um, wishbone, fishbone? Fish, fish, fish hook. Fish what? what was it? No, bonefish. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Took me a second. Yeah. Bonefish. Yeah. bonefish. Uh, so um, that's tomorrow at seven. And then um, from the, uh, shoot, um, the Economic Development Commission, or um, I don't, was there a meet? I don't think there was, there haven't been meetings. Oh, there haven't been meetings, but the, but the Chamber of Commerce has um, awarded their annual awards. And just for the, um, if you've missed it, the Chamber Business of the Year has, was, is the Modern Edge Salon on the Berlin Turnpike. Um, the Gail Whitney Public Service Award was given to the Greater, the General Federation of Women's Club. The Chamber Member of the Year was given to Tiffany Ham Govia from Geico. The Business Person of the Year was Kaylin McBee from Balance Massage and Wellness. The Youth Service Award was given to Victor Fontana and Donna Fontana um, for their service for Newington Recreational Basketball. And the Public Safety Award was given to Scott Mangan from the um, volunteer, Newington Volunteer Ambulance. Um, new officers were elected. Um, the new president is um, Katie Ross, no, Katie Kiss from Del Sol Spa. The new chamber vice president is Tiffany Hamgovia. And new chamber board members are Christina Patello and Jen Tarillo. Nice. Thank you. Is there, um, was there anything, I know we both attended the Conservation Commission meeting. I'm just, I don't think there was anything significant to report back from that. No, I think I was, I mean, you know, people are they're still looking into issues with, um, or questions related to, um, what is it, Rock Rockwall, the proposed- Right, the Culver Street- uh, Construction Street area, area. yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. Councilor Nagel? Uh, just to uh, remind people that the CROG meeting usually takes place after a council meeting. It's met, it's once a month. So I will be attending it in the middle of the day tomorrow. Uh, may have to leave the scholarship breakfast a little early, mm -hmm. but uh, I will be doing that as well and we'll report on it at our next meeting. Uh, typically, CROG uh, doesn't have meetings in the summer, so there may not be some for the next few months after this one. That's it. Thank you, Councilor Nagel. And apparently, I got a promotion because I'm showing up as chief clerk. I was just going to say, why does the chief have his hand up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I thought he was going uh, I, I, I can't remember if I mentioned this at the last council meeting, uh, but NCTV uh, submitted a video the day when drinking turns dangerous about mm -hmm. alcohol poisoning to the uh, ACM national uh, competition. And we uh, won for, well, it's not a first place. It's the only place for best community impact, best independent producer. Uh, and that award ceremony is in June and we're sending a couple of people out there. I think it's going to be uh, not Zoom, whatever, a live broadcast. So we're gonna try to show it, but it's it's a big it's a big deal for NCTV. We uh, Competed with stations that actually have up to a three hundred thousand dollar budget, which you know <laughs> I think we come in around third about twenty five thousand. So it was it was pretty good, and it's you know you've seen it. I think I sent the link out. It's 
it's a good video. So that's a tremendous TV. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. All right. Anyone else? I'm sorry. I'm clicking the tweet screens here. No. Okay. Next item is public participation. Any member of the public can uh, zoom in, raise your hand in the participants window or on your phone at star nine to raise your hand to be recognized. I'll just give it a minute for folks at home that want to participate, if any. <laughs> she does. All right, I don't see any hands up. We'll continue on. Oh, ah, Rose, just a minute of time. Rose Lines, 46 Alton Drive. And I am awake. Is that Counselor <laughs> Snow <laughs> questioning that? I'm just keeping my mouth shut because my mother told me if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it. So good night, everyone. Bye. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, we'll continue on. Uh, next is remarks by counselors. Councilor Mankey? Yeah, just to remind everybody that this Saturday is our Memorial Day parade. Um, I, I think, and that's kind of my soapbox, but I think sometimes we think Memorial Day is the beginning of summer, the day to open pools or, or the day to go out shopping for Memorial Day sales. But it's really about celebrating and recognizing those 30 members, our friends and family and neighbors. Um, or maybe our families even, uh, from Newington who gave their lives so we could have, have a three-day weekend and celebrate the beginning of summer. So sometime this weekend while you're celebrating and, and barbecuing and opening the pool and trying to pool, uh, remember who we're celebrating. Remember those 30 people who gave their lives so that we have a three-day weekend and we can we can have the, 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 the privilege of, of doing what we want for that weekend. But don't forget, remember those 30 people. Can, can you... Um... Just remind us about the time for the parade and the lineup and that sort of thing. The uh, The parade usually steps off at about eight, uh, ten, uh, ten thirty. 30. So yeah, you should probably be there about yeah, 10, ten o'clock. Yeah. Right. But um, there is, there is the, there is the mass at, or there is a service that our Savior's Lutheran ecumenical service that'll be on uh, at eight thirty, uh, eight forty five. I'm sorry, eight forty five. I should have brought the fly with me. Uh, eight forty five, and there's uh, a breakfast provided. Um, so it's hopefully you can go to the service and then go out the front lawn and watch the parade. Except for us, we'll be marching the parade. Uh, we usually march first. Um, so we're in the first division. Uh, and then we, um, we were invited to attend the rose ceremony, which is um, actually up, up on the right in front of Keith's office in the mayor's office, where the, where the monument is now. Uh, there'll be a tent put up there tomorrow, I believe. Um, we encourage the town to attend. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's really where you, we, we call out the, I think it's important that this town, twice a year, we call out the names of those people who died, whether it's World War I or, or the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. We call out their names. So once or twice a year, their names get spoken because we, it's easy to forget. It's easy to say, well, they're just, they're just people. We don't, I don't know those people. Um, but, you know, they gave, they were from, they're from this town. They gave their lives. Um, it's a beautiful ceremony. Recommend everyone attend. Councilor Mickey, are you all set? I'm all set. I should take my hand. Okay. Councilor Donahue? Yeah, I, I just want to apologize for um, the lack of decorum that we, we just had. I should have just kept my mouth shut and talked to Mitch in the parking lot. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Next item is uh, informational items. So I'll just go through. We have in our packet this evening, um, and we want to make the public aware that we have the Newington Summer Youth Adventures. Registration due date is Thursday, June 9th. Um, it's open to students entering grades five through nine. Um, they usually do a number of different um, trips and events, and I'm sure that's available on our website. Um, it's usually run through human services, correct? Uh, yes. I so, yeah. yeah. My kids did that years ago, so great programs. And then we have the next three items are kind of tied together. It's one weekend that Parks and Rec is uh, really going all out for us. Uh, Friday, or sorry, Thursday, June 9th. 6 to 10 p.m. at Mill Pond Park is the Newington Goes Country, and that's featuring Nashville recording artist Jordan Oaks. There will be a trophy truck contest, mechanical bull riding, cowboy hat and boots contest. i got to pull mine out. Hey. Um, <laughs> I don't know what high striker is, but I'm going to go with it. Um, line dancing, potato sack races, cowboy tug of war, cornhole, trackless train rides, beer and wine garden, rabbits, pygmy goats, llama, donkey, and a horse to feed. Wow. Oh. 
Nice. And then, excited. <laughs> and then on Friday, June 10th is, I think is our second annual, if I'm not mistaken. Or yes, I believe it we is. We might have skipped a year in between with COVID. Um, June 10th uh, from 5 to 10 p.m. is Food Truck Friday. Um, so they will have food trucks. It says live music by Jordan Oaks that same night. I'm a little confused by that. That's two different dates, but we'll have to check on that and get back to you. Um, and there will be, we want to thank our, um, the sponsors, the Flood Law Firm, I Heart Media, and Happy Harry's help support that event. We have lots of sponsors. You'll see them on the flyers. And then Newington Parks Recreation Department is doing the sixth annual Motorcycle Madness on Saturday, June 11th from four to eight. Um, general admission for bikes is $10. There is a bike show contest entry fee if you want to enter your bike into the contest, it's a $15 fee. Um, spectators are free and it really is a, a wonderful um, event. They have lots of vendors and food and music. It's just a fun event to attend. I would highly encourage folks to do that. And then that same weekend on Saturday, June 11th from nine to noon or until full here at Newington Town Hall, 200 Garfield Street in our West parking lot, we have our shredding event. So, um, I get a lot of requests for this event, actually. People do reach out for this one. So take note, password onto your neighbors. It's here. Yes. Also, one that wasn't on this list is um, on yeah, June. Uh, Saturday, June 4th, from 11 to 3 o'clock is the Newington Public Safety Day. Um, Chief Clark kind of alluded to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's sponsored by the police department, the fire department, EMS. It's going to be held at the police um, parking lot. There's going to be a lot of activities, um, displaying equipment with demos, um, emergency response team, drone surveillance, bicycle rodeo, all of our emergency vehicles and extraction um, equipment will be there, CPR demonstration. And there's even, it says that there's going to be food trucks on site. So please come out, um, support um, your public um, safety dependent, defenders. And show your appreciation, say thank you, we love you to our police, fire, and EMS personnel. Mm -hmm. Perfect, thank you. And don't forget the 11th is the townwide tag sale for the 150. So. <clears throat> thank you, that was mentioned earlier too, yeah. Right. Council Rada? Uh, just uh, to confirm, special meeting this Thursday at 6 p.m. here. Yes, ma'am. And you'll get that posted up for us tomorrow, right, James? Perfect, <laughs> thank you. The only <laughs> item on the agenda will be the uh, Anna Reynolds uh, approval to move right. that forward. All right, Councilor Donahue. Uh, one of the items that dropped off the list also on Thursday, June 9th, is the uh, car show on the ah, side of the town uh, from six to six to eight. Is that Market Square? Six to eight, Market yeah. Square, yeah. Market Square. Square. Yeah. Square. Yeah. And so you go see the cars, come over, listen to some country music. Uh, it's a good Perfect. thing. Uh, another important event today, I believe, it is Mr. Page's 39th birthday. Yeah, this is mm -hmm. wow. So, congratulations <laughs> to Mr. Page. Thank for, you. Uh, I believe it's the 15th anniversary of her 39th. Yeah, like, <laughs> at least. Yeah, at least. Um, I wouldn't want to spend it anywhere else doing anything but this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> he is running again, isn't he? <laughs> All right. We are ending our informational items. We will move on to adjournment. So, thank you. Moved by Councillor Mankey, seconded by Councillor Donahue. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We stand adjourned at <coughs> whoa, 10.36. We can take a motion to adjourn, right?